In his high school days, he had 174 strikeouts with a .74 ERA. And was a part of the academic all Big 12 rookie team as a freshman. Then he had the season ending injury last year, so 2020 ended up being his freshman year, but 2021 on the books is another freshman year. So here we go, ready to go, Trey Morgan. How long was that delay? About 10 minutes. <laughs> of all the things to cause a delay in a baseball game, a pitcher changing his undershirt. Morgan let off the game with a double. Got this one out of play. Normally don't see a first baseman as a leadoff hitter in the lineup, but Morgan's a special one. Athletic. And he's quick. 1-1 one, on one the way. I did see a minor league game one time held up because starting pitcher was having some stomach issues. Had to uh, head to the bathroom a couple of times. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the only time I can recall a 10-minute delay. Morgan going opposite field again and making the play at the track. Andrade. One out. Well, that was a loud out off the bat of Trey Morgan. Well, he struck that ball well and well negotiated in left field by Andrade. That Crawford wall we've talked about all weekend is uh, has been playing interesting for a lot of these college outfielders who just aren't used to having to negotiate that type of a, of a wall in, in their outfield. They don't have that over there in the Brazos, do they? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> They don't have that left field wall like that. Not at Baylor Ballpark. I'm trying to think, is there any college stadium that has some type of wall or a nuance like that? I can't think of one at the moment. Dylan Cruz. It's one and one. I want to say that I think Columbia has a quirk in their ballpark up in New York. One of those East Coast schools have a, a, a funny quirk or wall. No hill that I know of. This Cruz got a count of one and two. Cruz ended up walking and scoring a run. Sacrifice by... Doty back in the first. Rigney. Got him. Has to slide it. Second strikeout for Rigney. Well, that pitch just gets to the plate and takes a left hand turn. And I've seen a couple of those tight spinning sliders from Rigney. And that pitch is just about unhittable unless you're sitting on it. And even then, it's probably hard to hit. Well, if Rigney wasn't focused before. I think he's locked in now. He has looked outstanding, retiring seven in a row since allowing two runs and nobody out back in the top of the first. Yeah, he has settled in. You're exactly right. Eight Tiger hitters retired in a row now. Jacob Berry had the double down the first baseline that Chase Westner made a diving attempt at. Outer half of the plate. We've talked about Jacob Berry all weekend, but yeah, one of the best switch hitters in all of college baseball, ranked as the number one player to be drafted in his class. Held on by the catcher, Castle, on the foul tip. So he's one pitch away from getting out of the inning after that long delay. Well, maybe they're uh, going to have to change his undershirt more often if he gets out of this <laughs> inning. Three up, three down. I think you might be onto something there. You know, they always say about baseball players, Pat, they're not superstitious. They're just very careful. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, I think I pitched with the same undershirt for about six years. It's just thing, you know, things you don't want to change. It just works well, and even when it has a bunch of holes in it. 
One two on the way. Down the left field line and this one's foul. From your playing days, what do you remember some of the other guys maybe with the interesting superstition, quirk, whatever? Oh man, there's a bunch of them. It's just a, uh, you know, the way you tie your shoes. You start with your left, go to your right. <laughs> the way you wear your stirrups, your pants. I mean, it's, you, know, you see guys that uh, have all kinds of quirks. The undershirt's a big thing. Yep. Remember nice. Turk Wendell? I do. He would brush his teeth in between innings. Oh, that's right. That's right. Right-handed reliever. Yep. Mets and Cubs. Yeah. I mean, the, the one that was probably most public was uh, Mark Fidrich. You know, just would have to play with the mound with his hands. Remember that? Yeah. On the outer half of the plate. Barry is gone. Couple of strikeouts in the inning. And Rigney looking pretty good. Middle of the third with LSU by a run. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs, that's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long, you'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me roam, discover, explore. The forest is quiet. The river will roll. One slip by the fire is all it took. But they made my arm better. Just take a look. Under moon and stars. That's where I love to stay. Let's go play in the woods. I'll show you the way. Watch me. The place to turn for any bird. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Two to one, LSU, as we go to the bottom of the third, Gerald Sanchez along with Pat Combs. And we've got a special guest up here in our television booth. It's Ms. Paula Harris of the Houston Astros, the executive director of the Astros Foundation. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great to have you. Well, this has been a fun tournament. And, of course, I don't know if you saw what happened the last half inning, but... You know, you come to the ballpark, you never know what you're going to see. You never know. <laughs> is it going to be a greasy shoulder? What's going to happen around this place? But this has been a phenomenal weekend. Great time with the Shriners. Great time with the kids, their families. This has been some good baseball. Well, you've been with the Astros now for a couple of years. This is, I believe, your second tournament with the... So, actually, it's my first. Okay. I came, uh, I got to the Astros in October, and so I've been here all day, every day, just taking it all in, learning, engaged with the Shriners, engaged with the family, um, just making sure that everything that we did, we were good hosts, and I think they're pleased. Got a new pitcher for LSU is Riley Cooper. Left-hander takes over for Grant Taylor. What are some of the things that you've seen with the families and share some of the stories? So, um, I think there was a backup or relief pitcher from OU that came through the Astros Youth Academy that played this weekend. So his family was up there and his granddad was up in the suite and saying it was a great day. Sitting in the suite, eating good food and watching his grandbaby on the mound. Oh, good love it, Paula. Well, you did a great job at the luncheon on Thursday and, and uh, well, you just bring joy and and uh, a lot of spirit to what you do and tell us why you love your job so much with the Astros Foundation. I tell you whenever you can impact a city, a community, it, you just you find a lot of joy in that Todd. I'm telling you one of the things that the Astros between the Youth Academy and bringing reinvesting in inner city baseball and bringing kids from the inner city back into baseball to working with childhood cancer, domestic violence, military, homeless, all of the things that we get to impact it's really, really positive. And so things like this with Shriners, where you see the kids, you see the difference that they make, 
I mean, it's life changing not yeah. only for the kids but for us. Yeah, yep. you get to experience the impact of what that dollar does in a kid's life, Paul. That's got to bring you a lot of joy. It changes lives. Yeah. And, and we talked with the coaches uh, at the luncheon. We did a Q and A with them, and they all said, you know, for these these patients, these children coming to the ballpark, you forget about your worries, you know, and it's just so therapeutic for them. Baseball has a way of just doing that. Baseball is therapeutic for adults, <laughs> healthy adults <laughs> that right. work every day and just need to come and take off your jacket and just relax and watch that ball and hear that bat crack, right? So baseball is therapeutic. So you know when you have kids who don't get to, you know, experience Minute Maid or experience baseball at this level, you know, you like to watch them and see the big smiles and watch them take all, in all the popcorn they can. Jack Pineda at the plate. Count of two and two, visiting with Paula Harris, executive director of the Astros Foundation. And Paula, you had said that you had joined the Astros in October of 2021. You came right in the heart of the postseason, didn't you? Right in the right before we went to the World Series. Yeah. So <laughs> I was retired. I was uh, I worked 33 years with Slumber Jay, who was a partner. You see our, our big sign up on the wall. And uh, after a year off, I said, it's time to get back on it. So <laughs> Couldn't stand retirement, could you? <laughs> this, I, I won the retirement lottery. Oh, that's great, Paula. Pineda's going to be safe over at first base. Hey, congratulations. We reached our goal, 100% collegeclassic.org. Oh, wow, outstanding. That yeah. is phenomenal. I, I phenomenal. saw that all weekend progress. Just and watching that move. Absolutely, and 100%, that's, that's wonderful. No, it absolutely is. And every dollar that anyone is investing, when they bought, you know, invested more with their tickets, paid five, 10, 20 more dollars when they bought their tickets, we're sending it all to Shriners. Oh, so. wonderful, Paula. Well, we saw the check presentation to Shriners. Tell us more about that. So they said that was the largest check ever. It was based on $1 for every ticket we sold, um, we gave back to Shriners. So how much was the check? The check was $50,000. Oh, my goodness. And that was the largest donation we made. So how about that? Say that again. That was so the largest? That was the largest donation we've made based on ticket sales for all of the Shriners classics. That so is outstanding. $50,000 goes back to Shriners. They're having their big 100-year gala here on the same field in November. So we're close partners with Shriners. Man, how cool is that? Absolutely. <laughs> well, it looks like we're uh, either close to, we're going to break the all-time attendance record for the Shriners classic here in Houston. And uh, like you said, Paul, you just confirmed a $50,000 check, so I think that puts them over the top in terms of attendance. But what a wonderful weekend, isn't it? It's been a phenomenal weekend. The games, 11, 3, and 7, watching the fans come in and out. The whole Minute Maid changes colors as <laughs> <laughs> between That's games. That's right. <laughs> it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to be a part of and really, really proud of the things that the Astros Foundation does, and this is, this is a big one. You're looking forward to next year already, huh? Already. They've already announced the yeah, teams. Yeah, they did. So that's out on Twitter, and everyone has their opinion, and we're going to be right here having a good time and doing good things for kids once again yeah. this year. Well, Houston fans showed so well, Paula, and I know we have, obviously, the team's fans travel well, but uh, I think a lot of just baseball fans in general from Houston turned out this weekend, too. And next year, another reason, because the Rice Owls will be here. Well, the Rice Owls and also the Texas a and There you go. So, and you know that. You sound a little partial when you I'm say that. A little bit partial. I like all teams. <laughs> I just like the Aggies a little bit best. There you go. There you go. Well, tell us your connection with A&M. So, I'm a 1987 petroleum engineering graduate from Texas A&M. Well, I'm not supposed to say whoop because I'm a Baylor guy, but I'll say whoop for you. Let's say whoop. <laughs> wow, that was, uh, that was the Cotton Bowl era. That was I remember. The, oh, yeah. yes. Yes, that was when we, we went years and years. Kevin Murray, quarterback. Kevin Murray was quarterback. Yeah, now his son, there. Kyler, in the NFL. It's really exciting to watch this next generation, right, come through and make big changes also. McKenzie with a 3-0 count. McKenzie really looking to try to get something going positive, not only in this tournament for his season, though. It's a left-hander, Cooper gets a strike. So what else is going on with the, the, the Astros Foundation? Well, as we start to get ready for our season, which is going to be starting here any day we know. <laughs> yes, we have faith. Yes. We have faith. Absolutely. We keep the faith. <laughs> um, we're getting all of our volunteers mobilized, We're getting, and we're still in the community all the time. Our 50-50 that we have during the games, we're going to be giving those checks out real time. Oh, how cool. So that's what I mean. So when you're in the audience and you're spending your money on 50-50, you're going to know exactly where it's going. We're going to be presenting checks. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Yep, looking forward to it, Paul. I do think I think they got a little closer today. We I know we can't talk too much about that, but we are praying that uh, that things get going because we love watching baseball in this ballpark. It's just a beautiful scene here at Minute Maid. And this was a good little get ready. Huh? That's right. Make We're sure just that ready. all the ice machines are working <laughs> and all that good stuff. So yes, as long as they're communicating, which they are, we know it's going to be over and we're going to be playing ball. Bats cracking. That's right. Kyle Nevin at the plate with runners on at first and second after the walk to McKenzie. With one away with Baylor trailing by a run to LSU here in the bottom of the third. Visiting with Paula Harris, the executive director of the Astros Foundation. It's going to be through the hole, and that's going to be a hit. They're going to wave the runner, Pineda. He will come in, and we're tied at two. Looks like we're going to play some baseball. We got us a brand new ball game, Paula. We do. We absolutely do. And McKenzie goes from first to third on that play, and you know, you talked about it, Pat, about Rodriguez, Coach Rodriguez being very aggressive on the bases, going from first to third right there. And that's uh, the, kind of the M.O. for Baylor. We saw the six stolen bases yesterday against Tennessee. And well, Baylor, uh, as we talked about in the open, Gerald, when they get runners on base, they're going to be aggressive. We've seen that so far here tonight. Let's talk a little bit about the the star that, that really just took everybody by storm, Alec. I mean, w watching him and getting, re getting, being able to meet him and talk to him, seeing him through all the tunnels. He's such a phenomenal kid. <laughs> and he's at Northwestern, and he's journalism and, or sports journalism. That's right. And so this, he's right in his element. I mean, kids, being able to watch kids develop and grow, all kids. That's what we want to see. We want to see, see our kids develop, grow, go to college, and become successful. And he is on the track. He's past the track, I think. Remember at the coaches' luncheon when he uh, hosted the Q&A panel with all the coaches? And uh, him and uh, head coach of Baylor, Steve Rodriguez, they were mm -hmm. they were going back and forth, weren't they? They were. They <laughs> And during the first day on, on Friday, on Friday's game, I think they were ribbing each other also. So he has a great personality. He's a great representative for Shriners. And uh, it's been fun to host him and all of the kids they've had out here. Yeah, Connor came by in the booth over here, and uh, you know Mia. Yes. Uh, there, there was there's been several kids that they just you're around them and they radiate positive energy, and they you do. just can't help but fall in love with them. This one's hit into right field. Barry coming in, tagging and coming home is Richardson, and he will score. McKenzie, beg your pardon. McKenzie coming home from third, and Baylor with the lead. Paul, I think you're right. When you meet the Alec and, and all the, the child ambassadors, the patient ambassadors, uh, you know, they're just so inspirational that to see young people who have had to battle through these physical uh, disabilities and to come out and, and live life with joy and, and focus on things ahead, uh, boy, it's got to be inspiring to so many people around them. Absolutely. Shriners has changed so many lives. And in my personal life, I had a cousin who had a small little accident, what we thought was small, but mm. uh, on a moped at an early age, and her leg was in traction at Shriners for months. Mm. And it still never, you know, grew as fast as the other. So my family, we've been donors to Shriners because we watched that whole process and being there with no charge as for a kid and kind of made our family feel like everything was going to be okay and seeing the kids there. So it's good to come back as an adult and be engaged with Shriners again because I remember as a kid, my little cousin going through it and oh, Shriners man. being there. Yeah, personal experience. There's a bun out in front of a home. Catcher McManus gets Wesner and it will retire the side. Paula, thanks so much for joining us. Thank and you. And we look it's forward to continuing to working together. I tell you, next year we're going to do it even bigger and better and faster. So this is a good <laughs> practice run for me. Love it. <laughs> Paula Harris, Astros Foundation. We started Warby Parker to make glasses more affordable. But then we thought, why can't we do the same thing to contacts? So we did. Shop top contacts brands without the hidden fees, plus get free shipping and save 15% on your first order of contacts at warbyparker.com. When it comes to contacts, Warby Parker offers dozens of brands, including Scout, our very own comfortable, breathable, and affordable daily lens. Learn more about Scout or save 15% on your first order of contacts at warbyparker.com.
Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Big moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. The 2022 season is right around the corner. Secure your spot to watch the Astros with a partial plan. Whether you want to see every series or be at the ballpark every weekend, there's a perfect plan for you. Visit Astros.com slash ticket plans to learn more. Gerald Sanchez along with Pat Combs at Minute Maid Park and Baylor taking the lead in the last half inning. Now it's LSU's turn against Will Rigney. As Kate Doty, second baseman, to lead it off. That throwing error ended up resulting in a run. And Baylor taking advantage. There's a strikeout or half of the plate. I want to get back to the, the season ticket packages for the Astros. I can personally attest I've been a season ticket holder for 18 seasons. And there's no better value and dollar than Astros season tickets. There you go, personal experience. Yeah, absolutely. So where are your seats? My seats are in section, uh, they're in the upper upper deck, right above the on-deck circle on the first base side. Seeing many Astros memories over the years. Seeing the All-Star game back in 04, Jeff Kent's walk-off home run, the World Series 05, 17, 19, 21. And, you know, it, it's... My father and I, we spent a lot of time together. We have that great father-son bond, and it's baseball. Baseball brings us together. <laughs> and my father told me that a long time ago. He says, baseball's the game that brings everybody from all walks of life together. And it's true. It is true. Yeah, and I, I think it, it's also the legacy, like you talk about with your dad. And, and I know with my dad, the same thing. My grandfather, I mean, you know, we just would love to do baseball games together. And it did. It created some great memories over the years. And... You know, it's it's affordable. Families, there's something to do for everybody here at the ballpark. And the Astros do a fantastic job here at Minute Maid to keep all fans of all ages involved. Yep. That's great, Gerald. You, you love to hear the community feel of, of what the, uh, a Major League team can do because not all Major League cities have that. Joe Bear has got a count of one and one. You see a lot in college towns. You see it in minor league baseball towns. The community really rallies around the team, but uh, yeah, it is great to see. And of course, Houston has had some some tremendous winning seasons here. Now, what six straight championships? I mean, almost unheard of in major well, league baseball. Five straight American League Championship Series, in which they've gone to, been to the playoffs six out of the last seven seasons. It's fouled out of play, and. You know, there was a time when it wasn't so much fun. That's and right. I, I would still come <laughs> to the ballpark, and we would still root on the ball club no matter what. Just diehard, loyal fans over the years will always support this baseball team. But it wasn't always easy. And then they make some draft picks. Jim Crane, the ownership, made some changes, and you could see the development. There was light at the end of the tunnel. And then in 15, they made the postseason. Dallas Keuchel beats the Yankees. They have that great series, almost beat Kansas City. And, of course, 17, who can forget? That's right. <laughs> winning the World Series against the Dodgers. And the Dodgers and Astros had a rivalry back in the National League, 70s and 80s. Oh, yeah. And it was it was fun to beat Los Angeles There's in no the doubt. World Series. There's the 2-2 on the way. This one's fouled. I always remember Tommy Lasorda in 1986 when the Astros won the division. A great year that Mike Scott had, and they had that that veteran ball club Bill Garner was a part of and and Alan Ashby the year before Tommy Lasorda and the Dodgers they had they had won the West and Alan Ear took over as the manager of the Astros who came over from St. Louis and Tommy Lasorda 
said, don't worry about the Astros. This was in June. They're just renting first place. <laughs> well, the Astros went on a rent to own and they ended up winning the division and had that great series against the Mets. It should have been the Astros oh, in the 86 World Series. That was some uh, poster board chatter right there, we call it. We just hang out on the poster board. We walk in and see it every day, right? Joe Bear with the walk. One out walk. Rigney had, had a nice little string going. He sure did. First hitter that's reached base since Jacob Berry back in the first inning. It was a 10 in a row retired by Rigney up until that walk. Jordan Thompson. Missing on the outer half of the plate. Well, there's, there's, there, are, there is some gamesmanship going on here in this game between these two teams since that little incident. I think he got Will Rigney fired up when he had to go change that undershirt. And you saw the reaction last inning after he came off the field in the strikeout of Jacob Berry. You know, we were talking about the the quirks of ballparks and so forth and left field here at Minute Maid Park. These guys normally don't play in fields like that. Of course, remember Towles Hill before the, the renovation at the end of the 2016 season. It's Thompson. Single. There's some ballparks that actually do have some short fields. Vanderbilt, short left field. Auburn, short left field. And in the Air Force, they have a short right field. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, depending on where you are, I mean, it's just, it's really cool that you, you have these different nuances. Of course, Major League Parks started changing, what, about 10, 15 years ago. And I played in the old Veterans Stadium. It was like the big bowl, which was the, <laughs> yeah. you know, that was kind of the way they built those stadiums back in the 70s. And, Oh, you sure do like coming to a ballpark where you have these different angles and, and uh, nooks and crannies, so to speak. And as you've referred to it, Gerald, pinball alley there in left center. Never know where the ball's going to end up if it goes out there. Down the middle, Thompson taking a strike. We mentioned when this ballpark opened in 2000, it was an adjustment for the Astros. They had played in the cavernous, spacious Astrodome oh, yeah. where it was pitching speed and defense. And while at the end of that era of the 90s, the Astros had some great offense. Derek Bell, Bagwell, it was before Berkman. And they had to make an adjustment. Missing outside. Thompson with the walk. And back to back walks. But when this opened, it, <laughs> they called it 10 yard ball, 10 run ball park, and <laughs> pinball machine. But Roy Oswald. 2001 as a rookie really kind of calmed things down him and Wade Miller right handers and the Astros made the playoffs that year after that horrible 2000 season 01 they ended up winning the division and learned how to pitch then of course a couple of years later Roger Clemens and you know they, they say the, the rest is history got a pinch hitter Pearson Josh Pearson coming on coming in for Jack Merrifield, third baseman. You know, right now he's kind of rolling along here, then back-to-back uh, -back walks that put him in a bit of a bind. First pitch strike. Well, the difference, Pat, I think, is that he was able to get first pitch strikes over. He hadn't done that here. The back-to-back -back walks. As Pearson. Made a couple of tough pitches on Thompson that didn't go his way. And you see him right, right, nibble a little bit with that fastball. That's what this lineup will do. It'll cause you to try to nibble a bit and then you can get yourself in trouble with the walks. Pearson down to count 0 and 2. Pearson, a freshman. a big moment in the game. I know it's early. It's top of the fourth, but Baylor had just gotten out and taken the lead. And Pearson, only five at-bats on the season, has a chance to tie the game or maybe even do something else. Rigney trying to go on the outer half of the plate, missing. 
And look at the change up right. just off the outside part of the plate. Got some activity in the bullpen for Baylor. One out. Joe Bear, the lead at second. Did he go? He did not. Slider just missed. Clint Fagan, third base umpire, palms down. A good hold by Pearson. Check swing, holds up. And looks like uh, Matt Volker. He started warming up in the first inning. Now he's up here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, pitch count getting towards 70 here for Rigney. And got to believe that uh, Coach Rod has him on a pitch count. There's a big swing and miss. Pearson, two away. A nice pitch by Rigney. Goes to the bottom of the strike zone with that slider. That's fourth strikeout for Rigney. Jay Johnson out to talk to his hitter, Gavin Dugas. Johnson has used these offensive timeouts throughout the weekend and something you don't typically see in, in college baseball, but uh, John Strauss will counter with the move to the mound of his own, the Baylor pitching coach. More of a strategy meeting in terms of how Baylor wants to defend against Dugas. I heard you and Brett talk about the lineup up and down for LSU and how really there's no holes. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, you think, okay, well, we get down to the bottom part of the order, but that's not the case with the Tigers. Not this uh, not this lineup, not this year. This is a special lineup that Jay Johnson's rolling out. And, you know, you talk about a, a pitcher that has to throw high-stress pitches during the course of a game. That, you, know, you get runners in scoring position. Each pitch means a little bit more. And uh, that tends to add up. You know, not only the pitch count, but it tends to add up in terms of the fatigue on your body, your arm, and definitely your, your head, you know, just the mental approach. So that's what this lineup will do to you. It'll, it'll wear you down a little faster than some other lineups. Well, we talked about how LSU can score runs in the blink of an eye. And they, with two outs here, they have a chance as Dugas coming up to the plate. Thank Paula Harris, the Astros Foundation, for joining us. It's been a wonderful Shriners Children's College Classic. This is the final game. Things like we just started on Friday morning, Pat. Yeah. It, uh, it's gone pretty fast, but uh, you know, we get to the Sunday night game, and, and you're looking for one of those uh, good pace games, good well-pitched games, and you know, so far it's been okay. Both pitchers throwing strikes, and now Riley Cooper in relief with his starter, Grant Taylor. And they call a balk, which will advance runners to second and third. Joe Bear goes to third, Thompson to second. Let's see if we can see what home plate umpire Ronnie Teague saw on the balk. Dugas, count of 1-0. Oh. Now yeah, let's see as he comes set here. We'll take a look, see if we can pick up on it. Yeah, start and stop. Just a, just barely a stutter. Complete umpire Ronnie Teague caught it. Grounder, that's going to go up the middle. Great ball clubs take advantage of opportunities. How big was that ball call? It could have been the one run to tie it up, but now instead it's two runs. And a huge call against Rigdon. And the Bears. And LSU reclaims the lead. It's Tyler McManus. Number nine hitter. Well, you're eight. Hitter produces with the two run single. 
and we talk about it. I know you and I have talked about it in previous games that we've done this weekend. Walks, two walks in the inning, both yeah. come home to score. That definitely came back to bite Rigney. You're exactly right. And that's what this team does. You start picking with that fastball, and next thing you know, you've got a couple of freebies on base, and both those free base runners score in this inning. Now Rigney falling behind. This is reminiscent of the first inning in which he fell behind, had a walk in that first inning. Then he pitched lights out in the second and third innings and has fallen in trouble here in this fourth. Got it. Yeah, you can't pitch behind to this Tiger lineup. No, you're asking for it. Yeah, you are. I remember a coach once told me more often times than not, the reason a pitcher gives up a hit is because he's behind in the count. Yeah, no doubt. If you look at the, uh, the statistics, will tell you that. You know, batting averages tend to go up on 1 0, 2 0, 2 1, 3 1 counts. Uh, I think Rigney wanted that one, or he did something. A little upset. Let's look at that body language. Yeah, I hope that umpire Ronnie Teague didn't appreciate it either. And Rigney, uh, often the great competitor, and you know, sometimes I can get the best of you. That ball was down. The 3 1 to McManus. Inside. Dugas up to second. McManus with the walk. That's the third walk of the inning. Fourth walk of the ball game for Rigney. And that's going to be all as Steve Rodriguez comes out of the first base dugout. Yeah, the pitch count's starting to get up there at 76. And just a lack of command this inning from Rigney. I think that uh, it's a pretty easy decision. But good start up until the two walks here in the fourth. New pitcher when we come back in the top of the fourth with two outs. No matter who you are, and actually no matter what the year of car you, you're driving, there's nothing like the Sewell customer service. Everything is seamless and everything is well calculated, well thought out. I would love to think that it's just me, but I know that they do this for every customer. I'm a Sewell customer for life. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at Sewell Cadillac. Behold, unlimited wireless for only 30 bucks. That's pretty cool, but you know what's cooler? Saving up to 400 bucks. Exactly. And if we really want to take it up a notch, get all that and nationwide 5G included. Ooh, nice shot. Send that to me. I got you. Break free from the big three and get connected to the nation's most reliable 5G network. Get the new Samsung Galaxy S22 series on Xfinity Mobile. And right now, save big with up to $750 off a new Samsung device. Switch today. If we weren't proud of the craftsmanship and level of detail that go into every pair of Warby Parker glasses, well, we probably wouldn't show you how they're made, including this part, which is our favorite. Wow. And this is also great. Each pair comes standard with lenses that are scratch resistant, anti-reflective, and UV protective. Try five pairs for free at WarbyParker.com. The Astros are hiring. Join us on Saturday, March 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Union Station for a part-time job fair. We're hiring for your part-time positions in retail, guest services, and tickets. To see what specific promotions are available, visit astros.com slash jobs and click on part-time job fair postings for more information. And Matt Volker, the lefty, Comes in for Baylor, taking over for Will Rickney, and Volker inherits Dukas at second, McManus at first, to the top of the order with Trey Morgan, the first baseman. We've got a lefty on lefty matchup. As LSU has grabbed the lead here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, Volker on in relief here first. Time we've seen a reliever out of the pen for Baylor. He was a closer at Loyola Marymount. But uh, really flexible in terms of how the Bears can use him. He can start, leave, potentially close. Now 
kind of piggybacking this start with Will Rigby. You'll see the sinker 87 to 89. Also has a slider changeup and an occasional curveball. Morgan one for two, started off the ball game with a double down the left field line and scored the game's first run. And the first pitch from Volker, strike called. LSU, two out, two runs single by Dugas up the middle. After a balk that had been called against Rigney. Now, Volker with the glasses has got a count of 0-2 to Trey Morgan. Yeah, back-to-back -back sliders to start off Morgan. See what Morgan's two-strike approach is here. Volker making sure he's on the same page as his catcher, Castle. Line to left. It's in. LSU going to score another run. Yep. Sliding in safely. Dugas. Three runs. All with two outs in the top of the fourth for the Tigers. Morgan again for the third straight at bat goes opposite field. And again, barrels up the baseball with two strikes. It's a great approach by Trey Morgan. You see him just stay behind that pitch really well and the fastball up out over the plate. Volker trying to finish him with the fastball and Morgan just goes the other way. Really well done by Trey Morgan. It's never easy for a lefty versus lefty. And right there, you said it. Good job by Morgan. It's Dylan Cruz, center fielder. And trying to continue the inning for LSU in which they have seen three runs come across. Well, Jared, I think Will Rigdon will look back on this start and be a little bit upset at himself that he did a pretty good job of controlling the bats of LSU, but three of his walks, the only three walks he had, each of them scored. Well, it goes back to what we talked about, those walks. As the great Frankie Frisch once said, oh, those bases on balls. <laughs> yep, the freebies tend to be the ones that beat you over the, the course of the season, and certainly here tonight, that's what did real Rigney in. And of course, a couple of big hits as well to pile on. Cruz hit 362 last year as a freshman. Had 18 home runs and 42 RBIs. The 18 home runs most by a freshman in LSU single season history. That's saying something. Baker stepping off the rubber. Cruz is 0 for 1. A walk, a run scored, and a strikeout. Freshman all SEC. <laughs> Trying to get that final strike. Yeah, took something off that. Cruz out in front. Yeah, just a pure hitter. Dylan Cruz. Can go up the middle. Obviously has power. Has a couple of home runs this season. That one misses way outside. Throw to second base, and it gets off the glove of Richardson. Not far enough to where McManus can score. As McManus is at second base. Castle saw a little bit of daylight there and tried to back pick on McManus, his fellow catcher. You know, short hop. We talked about eight and nine producing in your lineup. 
Well, that's what has happened in this inning. A two-run single and a walk. Then you get it to back to the top of the order. And Morgan lining a RBI single. Scoring Dugas, number eight hitter. Here's the 2-2 with two outs. Ball gets away from the catcher, Castle. Wild pitch. Boy, LSU one hit away from making Baylor feel really uncomfortable. Yeah, that was a breaking ball down in the dirt. You saw Corey Castle try to square up and block that pitch just off his arm. Second wild pitch. Rigney had a wild pitch back in the first. Full count with two outs to Cruz. Barry on deck. I think you want to face Barry with the bases loaded. Pineda. That's the third out. However, LSU all with two outs score three runs on a couple of hits and they have taken a five to two lead. cancer I'm going to beat it that's no doubt in my mind I'm going to win this battle defeating cancer will take all of us join our team to help fund game-changing research that saves lives at the V Foundation V is for victory over cancer V is for victory over the odds V is for victory over health disparities victory over setbacks victory over the unknown V is for victory over giving up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Join our team to help save lives. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart. And it cannot touch my soul. 100% of donations fund game-changing cancer research. Donate now at V.org. Each week, he takes you around the world for unlimited access to legends. You have done your research. And future legends. You are the first person I chose this. In Depth with Graham Bensinger. Six remarkable kids have each teamed up a participating university for the Shriners Children's College Classic Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan base can raise the most money in support of Shriners Children's. Go online to collegeclassic.org to donate in honor of your favorite team today. One of the great events that Shriners Children's Hospital puts on every year college classic of course the golf tournament that they do east west game all of those games at just they're outstanding and and for such a wonderful cause yeah it's been a great weekend and it's certainly provided great entertainment here through the avenue of college baseball and i sure have enjoyed it gerald it's been a lot of fun Riley cooper has a ground ball out andrade One up and one down to the bottom of the fourth. Baylor trailing by two at five to three. Riley Cooper, one of the couple of the players that followed Jay Johnson from Arizona to LSU. From Fresno, California. 6-2 left-hander. On for his second inning of relief. Esteban Cardoza Okendo. Didn't have a chance to talk about Grant Taylor exiting after the second inning. I wasn't sure if that was planned or maybe something happened with him, but weak ground ball up the first baseline. Cooper. And over at first base, Cardoza Okendo. I'll roll that a base hit. Yeah, it's going to be a hit. And it 
you know, one of those communication plays between the pitcher, Riley Cooper, and his first baseman, Trey Morgan. Morgan started an attempt at the ball, then stopped, and by the time he stopped and tried to get back to the bag, it was too late. Cooper got over, but uh, filled the ball, tried to flip it to Morgan. That's swing and bunt. Yeah, swing and bunt. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan saying, hey, man, you can let me know. <laughs> yeah, that's that play you practice. It's called PFP, yeah. Pitcher's Fundamental uh -huh. Practice. And you work on that a lot during the preseason. Yeah, PFP, the good old PFP. Yeah, and uh, Morgan standing there after the, the flip by Cooper saying, hey, man, <laughs> you got to let me know a little sooner. Nothing I can do about it. Always remember coaches talking about a guy that can feel his position from the pitcher's mound just added bonus you know a guy that was pretty good at fielding his position was greg maddox oh man gold glove winner numerous yeah. seasons well, you save yourself a lot of trouble when you can field your position at the pitcher's mound and it was always a thing we were taught you know coming up through college minor league balls that uh, once that ball leaves your hand on the pitcher's mound, you become a fielder. Right. Some guys took that serious and some others didn't. <laughs> Castle ahead of the count, two and one. So this is the part of the lineup for Baylor that you want to see start producing. Turn it over to the top of the order with Pineda and Richardson. And, of course, McKenzie got a walk his last time up. So... One, two, and three hitters for Baylor, but eight and nine. It's always important to have your eight and nine guys get on base, set the table for the top of the order in an inning. Possibly scoring multiple runs as Baylor gave up three in the top half of this inning and trailed by two. Yeah, that's exactly right, Gerald. You're looking for these guys at the bottom. At least give your top of the order a chance with Runners in scoring position and you get Pineda coming up to bat for the third time, turning this lineup over in the fourth inning, barring a castle double play. Into right field, Barry cannot make the play. This one's going to roll for a while. Cardoza Ocano being waved, the throw to the plate, safe. Castle just placing it in right field. Barry did all he could. Yeah, once it got by Barry, that was going to be trouble, and you're exactly right. Joe, that ball rolls almost into the corner. Plenty of time for Esteban Cordoza Akendo to scoop around from first base, and just like that, the Bears take this lead down to one with Castle at third base, and Pineda now a chance to get him in. Triple RBI. Maybe if you didn't have a catcher, could have been an inside the parker. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, there was some interference at first base. You saw Castle round first and ran right into Morgan. Home plate umpire Ronnie Tigg signaled that he saw what happened at first. So, you know, had he felt like Castle could have made it around, he would have awarded home plate. But I think that's the right call. Keep Castle at third base. And That's going to be all for Riley Cooper. Now we'll see the second reliever, third pitch of the day for the Tigers. That's Gervais. Gervais coming in the game. Paul Gervais. Let's look at this play again as Castle just bloops this into right field and then bam morgan and castle bang into each other but he didn't stop <laughs> that's a couple of linebackers right there oh castle's not a small human either and we know what morgan did the other night steve yeah. rolled play over cash the first base coach for the oklahoma Sooners. second collision that morgan's been involved in this weekend he doesn't have the pads on <laughs> Well, we've seen it's, it's 
I think, you know, we, we, we talked about this, too, about how you got two sport players playing college baseball. They'll play some football. There's a kid on uh, UCLA that was on the football team. As Gervais warmed it up. Gervais, just four innings this season. And he is pitcher number three following Grant Taylor, Riley Cooper. Now that run over at third base belongs to Cooper. Well, good look at uh, Paul Gervais. You see the stats. Perfect on the season as far as the ERA goes. How about that strikeout to walk ratio? Seven to zero. And got a little funk to this right hander. Sits 91 to 95 with a fastball and pretty good spin rate. Major League average, but one of those pitchers again, it pounds the strike zone with a different arm angle and really effective out of the bullpen for LSU. That 0 3 quarter delivery gets him running his fastball, it's late. That was a pretty tight slider, low to mid 80s, and a changeup. Well, top of the order for Baylor, Jack Pineda. He's one for two. He's been on base twice. He scored twice. That's what you like to see out of your leadoff man. Ada Jr. Gervais, the right-hander. And at first one misses. A lot of legs out there for Gervais. <laughs> A lot of legs and arms flying at you. And that's going to be a foul reaching into the seats. And a party for Baylor hitters is to try to get that sinker up in the zone. That's typically where it flattens out. Anything down is going to have that strong movement to it. LSU defense playing back on the infield. They'll concede the run if Pineda can put it in motion here. Gervais ahead of the count. Last game of the tournament. We've had a fun one so far. Swing and a miss. That's a big strikeout. Oh, that's huge. Less than two outs with a runner at third. Now with two outs. Yeah, Pineda swinging right through this fastball. You can see it tailing away. And Just got beat. So it's up to Trey Richardson. Baylor scoring two runs in the 2 1 win against UCLA on Friday and five runs in the loss 10 5 to Tennessee yesterday. That run number five is 90 feet away, which would tie the game, and Richardson behind the count. Richardson is one for one, sacrifice bunt, also a single. We've raved about Trey Richardson. We saw him back in high school at that showcase, that tournament. That's right. And he was he was impressing us then with Team Texas. Quickly down the count, 0-2. A couple of good fastballs nicking the inside corner from Gervais. And talk about him pounding the zone. He certainly is doing that here with Richardson. Castle trying to come home from third. See what happens with Richardson. Staying alive. 95 miles an hour, and Richardson just able to get a piece of it. Kind of left that ball out of the middle a bit. Got away with it, though. Oh, 2 Just missing. And we heard Gervais all the way up here. <laughs> yep, right and throw a 94. Just off the outside part of the plate. Well, he just comes right at you.
stays alive again. And Richardson just kind of flicking that bat out there to try and get a piece of it. Lives for another pitch, as they say. Yeah, and Gervais has got a good slider. We haven't seen it yet. Might see it here, though. Yeah, up, up in the count, one and two. McManus, in case that comes and he's ready to block it. Oh, he's just staying with the heat. Richardson is from Kingwood, which is 30 miles north, about 30 miles. Highway 59 from Minute Maid Park. There it is. Finally saw a slider. Kind of hung it up in the zone, though, and Richardson gets a piece of that. So good at bat by the Bears' second baseman. He is hanging tough against Paul Gervais. Gervais is sophomore. Comes from North Carolina. He's a transfer. He's been at several couple of colleges. There's a foul. Ooh, man. That was a hot shot. A couple of community colleges, Wake Tech and Pitt Community College. A pretty good find for this LSU bullpen. That was a really loose, whippy arm. And oh, this is the top and just lets it go. As a hitter, it's not comfortable to stand in on. You know, it's an arm angle. Foul. What a battle here between Trey Richardson, the second baseman of Baylor, and Paul Gervais of LSU. Yeah, Richardson is eight pitches into the at-bat. Make it nine now. Five straight foul balls. The one-two. Got him to go after it. And that will retire the side. Baylor, however, comes up with one to cut it a little bit closer. 5-4 LSU. Watch me. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. An open floor of inspiration. This is my place. Five positions to start. Leotard and tights. A story through movement under music and lights. Straight and tall, they promised I'd stand. I'm a ballerina who twirls like the blades of a fan. Watch me. Innovative scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros Spring Ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. of the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by AutoNation, America's largest and most admired automotive retailer. Back at Minute Maid Park, Baylor and LSU, we would go to the fifth inning, Gerald Sanchez along with Pat Combs, and I think we have, we're having some fun up here oh, in man. this last game. Back to. and forth. Yeah, what a game, too. Thank you to the Tigers and Bears for putting on a good show so far. But, yeah, what a what a weekend of baseball. And well, just to highlight this college game in this big league ballpark, it has been fantastic. Jacob Berry, the right fielder. He might be playing here one day in an in a MLB uniform. 
Great talent. Volker, who came on in relief of Will Rigney, the starter for Baylor in the fourth. Starts off Barry with the first pitch strike here. And Volker's kind of earned the reputation as a bit of a bulldog and just plays the game with not a whole lot of fear. That was a good location yeah. if you're Volker. Yeah, Barry didn't like it. He thought it was down, but pretty well located. You know, as a player, you can respectfully disagree with the umpire without showing him up. And I think that that's what Barry did just there. I think uh, what you know, good hitters do, they'll step out and say, hey, is that the bottom of the zone? Is that as, as far as you're going to go out or in? They'll ask those questions. I think that's the way you ought to do it. Barry RBI double his first time up. There's a change up from Volker. Yeah, Gerald, this guy has a really good shot at putting on a big league uniform one day. You talk about the, the ability to switch hit with his size and his power from both sides of the plate. Sure, it certainly plays well at the next level. LSU, this is the fourth overall appearance for LSU at this college classic. The Shriners Children's College Classic. 2015, 2017, 2020, and of course this year. Pineda. And did he stay on the bag? He did. Wow. Well, we've seen a couple of good plays yeah. over there by Wesner at first. That kind of was an instant replay we saw a few innings ago. That was Pineda with the high throw pulling Wesner off. And Wesner has to come off the bag and tag the diving Barry on his way by. Second time Wester has it has had to do that and it looks like Jay Johnson may want the crew to take a look at this. Did he indeed make the tag and okay, waited for his hitter Jacob Barry to get the dugout and said, Did you feel the tag? And Barry says, I did not. He's taking a look at it. Sure looks like he made it on his leg going by. Initially I thought that he was able to hold on with his foot on the bag, but no, you're right. It, it looked like it tagged him. One more right. look at it. They're pretty close, yeah. I'm not so sure you're going to have video evidence to overturn that. But yeah, it's got to be conclusive evidence to overturn the call. Yep. Well, I got uh, a quick Astro story for you. Are you ready, Gerald? Sure. So uh, in between innings, had a text from my agent, old Astros pitcher, Joe Sambito. Oh, yeah. Joe's yeah. listening to us out in California. Left-hander on the 80 ball club. Yep. After he uh, actually ended up with his career with Boston. Did it played in that 86 World Series. That's right. Yep. Joe was uh, obviously an Astros Houston fan favorite for a number of seasons. Oh yeah. Frank LaCourt, Dave Smith, That's Joe right. Sambito, the three-headed monster of that 80 ball club. See, I knew you'd go there. I knew you'd just pull, start pulling those names out of that encyclopedia in your brain. I love it, man. You are a true fan. Okay, Doty. For, and interesting you should mention Joe Sambito. I came across a old video on YouTube. Remember the great Bob Allen, the sports oh, yeah. director here in Houston for many, many years, late Bob Allen. He had a, uh, a Q&A, &A, a little interview with Sambito when Joe was with the Mets in 85 before he went to the Red Sox and I saw that and he talked about his his love for Houston and how he really enjoyed playing for the Astros in the Astrodome and looking forward to the new challenge and I came across that video that's that's really cool yeah I think those are two guys that had really good hair back then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we miss Bob he's good people yeah you think of those uh, old broadcasters we got to watch. We were so blessed in Houston. We had a lot of great ones, didn't we? And of course, uh, the great late Milo Hamilton. Yeah, one and one and two. Now it's two and two. Who was the old Rockets announcer? Gene. Gene Peterson. Peterson. Oh man, what a voice! Cut on and missed. Doty. It's two outs in the inning. Volker looking really good in this fifth inning. Sure is. 
I don't know, just listen to Gene Peterson growing up. Of course, that was the Rockets' heyday with Hakeem and Clyde Drexler. And you never could find a bigger homer in a basketball call than Gene Peterson. How sweet it is. <laughs> How sweet it is. <laughs> Braden Jobert at the DH. Two outs and no one on. LSU by a run. It's back in the day when you could fully criticize the officials and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing as the internet back then. <laughs> That's right. You know, we, we talked about the starting staffs, and I know in our conference calls with all these coaches, we talked about the starting staffs, and I asked a little bit about the bullpen, but really what's your takeaway that you have seen in all nine games with how these bullpens have been utilized and what what have you seen overall? Yeah, what I've seen is a lot of great arms. I mean, it's, you know, when you get these teams together, this collection of teams, and you're just seeing a lot of talent. The separator from a, a, the sense of a reliever to a starter at the college level is just really the command of your pitches. And usually it's the starters are gonna have three solid pitches, not just two. And that's oftentimes what you'll see as, as the great separator. But, I mean, I've just been so impressed with these arms. We've seen some bullpen arms coming out throwing 100 miles an hour. That's incredible. Starting staffs, your Friday night guy is your leader, and you want him to eat innings because that, that helps the bullpen as the series goes along. As this one is hit out into the outfield, and it's Nevin making the play. One, two, three for Volker. LSU retired in order. It's the middle of the fifth from Minute Maid Park. With Panera's You Pick 2, every meal is made fantastic. You can be fresh and fun, bold and classic, cozy and precocious. With 465 fresh, clean, craveable pairings, find a You Pick 2 for any mood. Enjoy a $1 delivery fee when you order on our app. Today, here at LSU and Alex Box Stadium, we welcome Hayes as a member of our program. It was awesome to have him around, uh, meet our players. He brought a lot of joy to a lot of people today. and. We're fired up to have him as a member of our program now. So we found out at my um, 38 weeks in utero that he was coming without a look. So we had about two weeks to prepare. We have a family member and he's a Shriner. So we knew of, you know, we knew about Shriners, and, but I wasn't familiar with what the hospital did. And so when we found out about Hayes, he said, you need to go Shriners. They will tell you exactly what you need to do. Like the jersey. You know, we've established some really great relationships with the staff there because we've been going for seven years. I've met a lot of people from Shriners. They told me a lot of good stuff. I loved it. I just really liked it a lot. I was amazed at how upright and how excited he was just to be here and the smile he had on his face was unbelievable. He's obviously a part of the baseball team now. He's one of us. I got to play with one of the baseball players. It's an honor to be here and I just like it so much. I just want everyone to know that I'm a regular kid. Join the Astros Buddies Club presented by HEB today. For $30, Buddies members will receive an Astros Buddies jersey, cap, drawstring bag, and lanyard, plus vouchers for tickets to an upcoming Astros game. Visit astros.com slash buddies to become a member today. Jared McKenzie leading it off. Your base for LSU. First pitch is fouled. It's always a good thing with the Astros Buddies. And it goes kind of hand in hand with the whole community aspect of how important this franchise is to the community of Houston. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, I was an Astro buddy as well when I was a kid. And Yeah, Roger Metzger. Yeah, there you go. But, uh, great times. And I never forget uh, the, the late J.R. Richard coming out to our Little League. I grew up at Sharpstown Little League. And back in the day when we had, I think it was close to 40 Little League teams in, in our community. And well, those were the days. J.R. Richard. Well, he could bring it, couldn't he? Oh, man. Very in intimidating presence on the mound. Yeah, if he doesn't get hurt, I really believe the Astros yeah. win that first championship back in 80. Well, Jim McKenzie trying to get things going. We talked about him in the open. He walked his last time up, he scored did. a run. That's got to feel good for him. You know, with a guy like his talent, it's going to take just the littlest thing for him to get going, too. Well, he's got one of the sweetest left-handed swings you'll see in college baseball, and 
you know, with McKenzie, his backyard is Round Rock. And Texas never gave him a look. He said that was interesting. His parents went to Texas. Right. He grew up going to Longhorn games. And McKenzie, he said, I wanted something different. Baylor is kind of the first school that looked at me, and that's where I wanted to go. Comes up empty on the cut here, and McKenzie gone. Out number one, bottom of the fifth for Baylor. Yeah, third straight punch out for Gervais, and he's got that fastball moving. This pitch just high spin. Doesn't move a ton away. Doesn't have that arm side run, but certainly that uh, above Major League average spin rate. There's Kyle Nevin. Speaking of former Astros, Phil, his father, was the number one draft pick in 1992. Nevin driving this. Ball is up, ball is up, and it's going to be caught by Cruz. Cruz patrolling the outfield here at Minute Maid like he's a big league vet. Yeah, like he owns the place. Well, what a great uh, run by Dylan Cruz just to even get to that ball and headed towards that left center bullpen area that we've talked about. And watch his catch as he is about five steps into the warning track and they're starting to run out of room. And Dylan Cruz, nice running catch for the Tigers. Antonio Valdez. Yeah, that outfield, it's it's not an easy place to play. So many little quirks and crevices. Ball can take all kind of funny hops when it lands. You got to be ready out there. Yeah, Cruz was kind of in the middle between that pillar and in the center field fence. And if that ball's maybe four or five feet to the left, it's up against that pillar. And that would have been an extra basis for Kyle Nevin. And there it is, the waste management sign. Valdez, and it's going to be caught by Thompson. Traverse, one, two, three. Baylor retired in order. We're through five from Minute Maid Park. I don't think I can do this. You said you wanted to feel the power of cricket 5G. I thought you meant like live streaming. Oh, we're live streaming, all right. Let's roll. Smile, you're on cricket. Excitement, the emotion, white, 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 white. the passion. Only on H Town High School Sports with Todd Free. See it right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Gerald Sanchez, along with Pat Combs from Minute Maid Park, and we're joined from uh, the booth here from Justin Johnson of Shriners Children's Hospital. How's it going, Gerald? Pat, thanks for having me. See you, Dustin. It's good to have you, and so excited that this tournament has gone on and some great games here. Absolutely. We've been thrilled with the turnout this weekend from college baseball fans around the country in support of the life-changing mission of Shriners Children's. You're the uh, director of sports management. What, is, what does that look like for the fans, the Shriners Children's? Sure. So our healthcare system has locations across North America, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, and we rely on sporting events to advance our mission through advertising, fundraising, and just general awareness of who we are and what we do 
for families all around the world, regardless of their ability to pay. We were talking about it, about how involved the Shriners hospitals are with the different sporting events across America, especially in Vegas. Absolutely. We just moved one of our major sporting events to Las Vegas uh, just about six months ago, our East West Shrine Bowl. It's in its 97th year. We moved to Vegas. It's the longest running college all-star football game in the country. We also have our PGA Tour FedEx Cup event in Las Vegas. We have a NCAA Division I men's basketball tournament in Charleston, South Carolina. I have been the sponsor of this tournament here in Houston this weekend for seven years and do a little bit with NASCAR uh, scattered through races across the season. Volker getting the strike out of Thompson. Oh, that was a nasty pitch right there. Yeah, great bacon ball. And Dustin, you've got uh, some pretty exciting announcements. One is an attendance figure, and I think the next is uh, maybe the field for next year. Yeah, so this weekend we've had tremendous show from the various fan bases here in Houston. Uh, we're excited to announce that we have broken the all-time tournament attendance record of the Shriners Children's College Classic this weekend. That's wonderful, wonderful news. 53,879 fans yeah. over the past three days. Thank you, college baseball fans, for showing up. Outstanding. And the next year, we're excited. Uh, we hope to have a great showing again here at Minute Maid Park. We have the Louisville Cardinals, the Michigan Wolverines, the Rice Owls, the TCU Horn Frogs, Texas a and Aggies, and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Man, what a field. That'll be fun. And some traditional national powerhouses uh, from across the country. Uh, Michigan coming off some tremendous success over the past few years. Yep. Louisville, regular guest at the College World Series in Omaha. And obviously TCU, Texas A&M, competitive year in, year out. And Texas Tech also has made several trips to Omaha uh, in the past several years as well. So excited to have Coach Tadlock back in Houston. So how does this scheduling work how do you work with the colleges to get them here so we have a tremendous partner in the Astros Foundation here this weekend that's the host of the event as the sponsor of the event we focus on telling our story to fans in attendance as well as raising money to help support our cause uh, so we work hand in hand with the Astros Foundation uh, to identify which teams we would like to invite uh, from markets all across the country uh, fan bases who we think will make the trip to Houston uh, to support our cause financially uh, but also in regions across the country that will tune in on television in markets where we have hospitals. So this weekend, UCLA made perfect sense for us to be invited as we have a location in Southern California. And we also reached the goal. And it's great news there with collegeclassic.org, reaching it at 100% on the fundraising end. Absolutely. We, we set out with the goal this weekend of raising half a million dollars. So $500,000. Oh, and we hit that earlier today. And hopefully fans watching at home Will help us exceed our goal and of uh, course that, that doesn't mean you can't stop donating yeah keep going <laughs> yeah so we have wonderful partners that have helped us reach that goal uh, marucci sports being one of them uh, out of baton rouge louisiana uh, providing fans at home with the opportunity to receive their own custom engraved baseball bat for donations of 250 dollars or more online at collegeclassic.org uh, we've seen a tremendous uh, outpouring of support from fans at home uh, through the marucci promotion that we're running this weekend that is a great promotion, Dustin. I got my bat in the mail last year, and, man, I was just blown away. The quality of the bat, Marucci does, does an incredible job. You get it personalized. If you get the uh, the big bat, the full-size bat, you can do the mini bat as well. But, man, that is uh, just tremendous from, from Marucci. And that will be a gift you, you want to put in a glass case and put it above your mantle or somewhere nice. Absolutely. Visiting with Dustin Johnson, National Association Director of Sports Management from Shriners Children's. And... The, the the level of baseball that we've seen here at this tournament, second to none. I, I just keep marveling at it. And then, of course, that, that field that we've got coming up next year. Yeah, it, there's games that always kind of sneak up on you at the Shriners Children's College Classic, and we always have at least one that fans tend to remember for years. Uh, Friday night was a tremendous game, walk-off from LSU. You'll see that footage here at Minute Maid Park for several years to come. Uh, and anytime you get LSU and Texas fans in the same building, yeah, I think that there's always a surprise or two. <laughs> I would say that last night's Texas LSU game had to help a little bit on the attendance, right? It, it did, yes. Yesterday we had nearly 25,000 people in the building uh, from start to finish. So I uh, believe it was the seventh largest crowd in a single day for an NCAA college baseball game. Well, that in is history. Uh, 
Yeah, that's, I was going to say, in, in, in the history of college baseball, which is something else, I think Brett Dolan made that uh, comment this morning that uh, you know, there's a couple of major league parks that opened up, kind of used college game to kind of set that up. And, but uh, this is just part of your regular you know, tournament every year. And how oh, outstanding to have uh, the, the fan bases that travel so well from Austin and from Baton Rouge. But uh, what a matchup we had yesterday. And the electricity in the building. I mean, it was it was something until the four run Texas second inning and then that LSU got a little, a little quiet then. Sure. But, but they stayed till the end. Yes, they did. And got their money's worth. Well, that was an odd pitch. It looked like uh, Volker got his foot hung up on the mound. Hit by pitch. Yeah. It uh, hits Dugas. And Crawford going to second base. Here, number 26, Tyler. So what's next for you? I mean, after tonight, you go home and then. What? You sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you get a little bit of sleep. But, no, we have events throughout the year. Uh, we have a, uh, a partnership right now in NASCAR on the uh, truck series with a driver named Jesse Little uh, who represents us through various races throughout the NASCAR season on Friday nights. Uh, so we work with his team to uh, share our story through professional racing. Uh, we'll gear up for our PGA Tour event in Las Vegas in October. Obviously, the preparation for that is already well underway and then our east west shrine bowl our college also a football game uh, trying to find the opportunity to return to las vegas with the nfl pro bowl we moved that event there this year uh, in conjunction with the nfl and had tremendous success uh, we were the thursday night game in vegas at allegiant stadium home of the raiders and then moved into pro bowl on sunday and just a uh, check of Court Castle, the Baylor catcher got hit, popped in the back of the head with that uh, back swing by McManus. Seems to be okay, shaking it off. He's looking up at McManus, and McManus is saying, hey, man, you're my fellow catcher. What are you doing? Hit me with the bat. <laughs> Take it easy. Well, exciting times ahead, Dustin, for sure. And, you know, you talk about this, uh, this children's classic here in Houston. The... The tournament has to be set like, what, two, three years in advance just because of schedules, right? Correct. So currently the schedule's booked, I would say, 60% of it booked through 2025. Yeah, and that's All because, right. obviously, coaches have to set their schedule so far in advance. So it's an extensive process, and, again, we're fortunate that the, the Astros have been doing this now for 22 years. We're in year seven of our partnership. Lean heavily on them. Yeah, t talk a little bit about that relationship with Shriners, Children's, and the, the Houston Astros. So we signed a contract with them back in 2015 uh, to come on board as the title sponsor of this event. And our goal was to make it not just one weekend of college baseball, uh, but a year-round partnership and initiative where we try to improve the lives of children here in Houston and around the country, uh, but also create experiences for them that they may not receive elsewhere. Uh, so in the fall, we host a Miracle League event here at Minute Maid Park to give kids with physical and developmental challenges the opportunity uh, to take the field at a big league stadium. Uh, the Houston Astros, uh, both current and former players, come out and pitch to them and, and help them hit and run the bases. This is a wonderful event for us. Uh, the Astros visit our hospital locations, uh, again, here in the, the greater Houston area, as well as on road trips uh, to the other markets where we have locations such as St. Louis, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. And they've made trips in the past. So, again, always looking to create experiences for uh, the patients and the families at Shriners Children's, and we're, we're fortunate to have that wonderful relationship this weekend, but also throughout the MLB season. And you talk about the, the experiences for the children, and a lot of these patients, they're a part of these college baseball teams. They go out for a day, and they feel like they feel like big leaguers themselves. Absolutely. We, this one's lifted in the air. Nevin drifting back. Ball carrying a lot better than it looked initially. Tagging and heading to third is Crawford. And runners on the corners and two outs. McMahon is flying out. We take a tremendous amount of pride in the team captain program that we have this weekend. We're we identify a patient that lives near the campus of each participating university, bring them to a practice or a scrimmage ahead of the tournament. They spend the day with the team, 
tell their story to the players and the coaches so that they walk away with a better understanding of what it is they're playing to support this weekend. And then we capture that content in about a minute and a half video. We play it each game so that the fans can see how their favorite team helps support our cause. And it really just helps connect the fans to who the Shriners are, what the Shriners do, and how families are helped every single day throughout our healthcare system, all without having any regard to their ability to pay. Yeah, tremendous, Dustin. It's, it's been a great partnership, you and the Astros. Of course, uh, the, the signature being here, the tournament here in Houston. And I love what Shriners is doing to, again, expand just the message of what you guys do, just incorporating the, the sports, the different sports that you now have incorporated. You've got the, the basketball tournament you talked about, the, the NASCAR, and now the, uh, the Shriners All-Star Classic there in, in uh, Las Vegas, the golf tournament. We had a chance to talk to Patrick earlier. And, and what, it, uh, what an exciting field of golfers coming in. Did Brett Dolan successfully fish an invite to Vegas? Oh, he did. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Patrick said to make sure we followed up with you. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> the fifth year in a row, we've, we've promised to do that. Sure. Right? <laughs> we'll, we'll get you guys a tee time at some point. Oh, man. Trey Morgan has worked it to a 3-1 count with two outs. Runners on the corners. I imagine that... Uh, that you've seen a lot of Baylor athletics over the years if you're from Central Texas? I have. I grew up in Waco, so very familiar with the Bears. And Morgan hit by a pitch. And Pat, you and I have been talking about that several times. What is it with hit by pitches this tournament? I don't know, but that's about the 50th one that we've seen in three days. It's uh, it's really kind of crazy. I mean, it's two back-to-back. -back. Well, not back-to-back, -back, but that one right in the middle of the back of Morgan. Yeah, that... Uh, that's going to leave a mark. Yeah, nowhere to go, but uh, we have seen an abundance of, of hit batters. It's almost become contagious. So the bases are loaded, and here's a dangerous hitter, Dylan Cruz. Center fielder is 0 for 2 with a run scored. Yeah, we talked about how breaking balls are getting away from a lot of these pitchers, and yet again, we see it happen here. Volker, left-handed reliever, missing inside for ball one. Well, I can say, uh, personally, I, I really appreciated the opportunity to work with you guys and be a part of this great tournament. It's been a lot of fun for me personally. And to see the smile on those kids' faces, you just can't feel the energy and the radiance from them. Sure. You, you guys have been wonderful to those patients and their families throughout the weekend. We couldn't thank you enough for, for making their experience that much better in Houston. Cruz popping up to Pineda, and that'll do it in the top of the six. Dustin, thank you very Thanks, much for man. having me. Thank, thank you, Dustin. Great to see you. Dustin Johnson from Shriners Children's. We'll be back in just a moment. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. Watch me roam, discover. Explore. I feel pretty. I must be a star. They helped me come a long way. I'll show you how far. Watch me. For 100 years, we've watched in awe as our commitment to transformative care continues to bring positive change to kids everywhere. Today, our brand is evolving too. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Here I stand on my own two feet. Jump shot intact, here to compete. Skilled hands were there to mend the bone. From loving halls that brought me home. My world stopped with a drive through the lane. Now give me the ball, you'll remember my name. Watch me. Orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Nurse. Hey, we gotta get you geared up, super fan. Game on. Let's compare here to there. Compare credit cards to find one that earns you cash back on jerseys that fuel the fandom. Compare and find a financial advisor so you can spend less time watching your investments wow. and more time investing in your team. Hit me. Oh. Compare your way there. Find the smartest financial products for you on NerdWallet. Shriner Children's College Classic is tradition that unites athletic excellence 
and the most amazing care anywhere. Shriners Children's is dedicated to improving the lives of children with orthopedic conditions, burns, spinal cord injuries, and cleft lip and palate. All care is provided regardless of a family's ability to pay. To learn more, visit shinerschildrens.org today. Come back to action and hey, well, yes. sign him up. <laughs> hey, no big deal, right? Came prepared. <laughs> Chase Wisner lining it foul. Wisner leading it off the bottom of the sixth. LSU by a run. Paul Gervais right handed out of the bullpen. That's into center. Good approach by Wesner. Hey, you saw the foul ball pulled hard. That time kind of keeps his hands inside outs that pitch and does a nice job of staying inside the ball, but there it is. When in doubt, use the gut. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Looks like he's done that before. What a thrill. Kobe Andrade. Lead off single. Baylor trying to tie this or maybe even take the lead. Andrade showing sack butt early. Merrifield from the Tigers, the third baseman expecting it, in on the grass. And Roddy want to set this angle to first base if he's going to indeed try the bunt. Now Jay Johnson's going to counter with some defensive maneuvers of his own. Kobe Andrade, 0 for 1. Andrade, you see the name Kobe. Yes, he was named after Kobe Bryant. His parents named him after Kobe Bryant. Spelled differently, right? Or no, the same. KOBE. -E. -E. Yeah, that's same. right. Yeah. All right. 0 for 1, and it's inside. Let's well, see what uh, Coach Rod dials up here. 2 0 count. He's got some more options to open now. Let Andrade swing it, maybe do a hit and run. And stay with the bunt. Andrade's got a count of two and one after that foul ball. Andrade from Corpus Christi. Went to Veterans Memorial High School. That's the, one of the newer high schools down there in Corpus. And also played at Texas A&M before coming to Baylor. Foul ball again. Now it's two and two. A little bit different. Two and oh, now two and two. Yeah, tough pitch to bunt. That's probably when you pull the bat back on. It's trying to butt that ball down the first baseline, and Gervais is throwing fastballs up and away. Yeah. Andrade pitched, pitched for Texas AM as a freshman last year. He transferred to, to Baylor. Playing left field tonight. 2 2. Cut on and missed. Couldn't get the bunt down. And Gervais then comes back with some swinging. You're always a lost opportunity when you can't advance the base runner, but Gervais has been just nasty to that outside corner to lefties. Runs away a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, just a tab. It's really just that high spin rate stays pretty true in the strike zone. It's, it's one of those pitches when you see it up in the zone, you, you see hitters tend to swing underneath it. There's just no sinking action to it at all. Esteban Cardozo Okendo taking upstairs. And look at the scorecard here. And Gervais has struck out every Baylor lefty he's faced. This that one. could be trouble, and it'll fall. Heading to third and sliding in safely, Wesner. The Bears had runners on the corners and less than two outs last inning, and they couldn't get the tying run. They had runners on the corners here with one away in the bottom of the sixth with the tying run, Wesner 90 feet away. 
Baylor has found that right field line a couple of times past two innings and worked out well for Court Castle. The triple down that same vicinity right in front of Jacob Berry as he tried to make the dive and the catch. That ball got by him, and Cordoza Okendo does the same thing. Now, looks like uh, Coach Rod will use his offensive timeout in a conversation with Castle. And that'll bring Jason Kelly out of the dugout for the Tigers. So here we go with the chess match again, right? Yeah, absolutely. We saw it there with the failed bunt of Andrade, then he swung and missed. And then just placing it perfectly in right field away from Jacob Berry. Well, the pitch count for Gervais stands at 32. Talk about pounding the strike zone. 24 strikes, only eight balls. And Ronnie Teague out to break it up. Right hander Eric Reselman. Could be next. Next pitcher for Jay Johnson. So here's Castle. Again, bottom part of the order playing a part in this game. Outer half of the plate. Castle got that triple in which Barry made the diving attempt and it rolled all the way to the right field corner. It was back in the fourth inning. We've only seen Gervais throw that slider a couple of times. And Could be two. Not in time. And the game is tied. RBI fielder's choice. Oh, Lesnar okay. scoring from third base. Oh, the Baylor catcher getting down the line. That ball was smoked. To Jack Merrifield at third, third base. He had a quick pick up Got the ball over to Kay Doty but the throw took him just a little bit high and Doty on his turn threw and spiked the ball to first base and Trey Morgan able to come up with it but not before court Castle beat it out so the Bears have tied this game here in the sixth inning Jack Pineda top of the order again bottom part of the order is doing something for the Bears saw it in the fourth inning and now here in the sixth, a single and a fielder's choice. There's been some production down at the bottom of the Bears' order. A few hits, the triple by Castle. Pinata ahead in the count, 2-0. and Pinata struck out his last time up. He was back in the fourth inning. Gervais delivers. Going back. And it's a home run. Oh, man. You know what? That ball looked like it was going to be caught, and it just kept carrying and carrying. And Pineda, home run. Wow. A two-run shot, and the Bears take the lead. How about the power from Jack Pineda? The Bears shortstop. You're right, Gerald. That ball did carry. I didn't think he hit it. That ball just kept going. You can see Dylan Cruz turn his back. And that ball hits uh, right around that Phillips 66 sign. Yeah, that's some center field pop from Pineda. And I know it's, you know, it's something that you go back and look at, but there's again the swing, the home run, but the failure to turn the double play. Off the bat of Castle. Yeah, no doubt. That ball was definitely a double play ball to Merrifield. And... Wow. By the way, it, it took off. I didn't think it was going to get out of here. And we got a pitching change for LSU.
I just want to get in more dramatic roles. Eric, you don't have any dramatic work to show them. Yeah, but I got the new Galaxy S22 Ultra on Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband. It's got amazing video on a crazy fast network. I can film whatever I want. Come, you spit it. How is that? Good. Are you filming or gaming? Can't talk. Online gaming out here is great. Well, I only got three more loops to get this. Where for all now? Okay, I just sent you my reel. That was fast. Now at Verizon, buy the Galaxy S22 Ultra and get the S22 Plus on us. 5G Ultra Wideband now in many more cities. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. <laughs> Excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. New Charmin Ultra Soft is now even softer, so you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. Move over, KFC. It's KFC Tenders. And the same creamy mac and cheese, crispy fries, buttery biscuits, and delicious sauces. The KFC 8-Piece Tenders Meal. Get free delivery on the KFC app. It's finger licking good. Coming at you from around the world. You are the first person I show this. The biggest names in sports, entertainment, and business. Don't put me on spot here. <laughs> Exclusive access and one-on-one -on -one conversations. None of your business. That's <laughs> oh, no. my personal question, Graham. The stories beyond the headlines. I'm just waiting for you to say mercy. Mercy. <laughs> In depth with Graham Bensinger. The Baylor Bears haven't hit a lot of home runs this season. They've only hit four. Two of them have come in this tournament. And the first of the season for Jack Pineda, giving the Bears the lead. And LSU going to the bullpen. Bringing in Eric Reselman, sophomore right-hander from San Ramon, California. Reselman comes in. Just four innings this season. And Baylor has fallen behind several times tonight, but each time they have responded. This is their second lead of the night. Yeah, been really a scrappy response by this Bears offense tonight. With uh, Razelman coming in as the third reliever, fourth pitch of the game for LSU. One of those great arms out of the pen. He'll be 91 to 96 on his fastball. And not the same MO as we just saw from Paul Gervais. Just comes right at hitters. Pete's in the zone. And it comes right after him. Mainly fastball. Has a slider. He'll use occasionally. But a ton of fastballs. Trey Richardson. Two outs in the inning. Seeing some big two out hits throughout the weekend, including this game. LSU scoring three times with two outs in their three-run fourth inning, and three runs here in the bottom of the fifth, including the two-out, two-run home run from Jack Pineda. Was long way to go. 0 2 to Richardson. You got underneath that slider. It's one of the things that Steve Rodriguez mentioned in our conversation with him earlier in the week about the competitive nature of this ball club and the cohesiveness that they have. It's a tight knit group. Uh, some great leadership from some of the veteran players. And guys like Chase Westner, senior. McKenzie's been there a few years. Pineda, for sure. And a couple of pitchers have been around a while, too. Tyler Thomas. Blake Hilton. Coach Rodriguez felt that in the early part of the season, the offense was pressing a little bit too much, needed to relax. There's the 2 2. Oh. For strike three. Reselman gets the final out of the bottom of the sixth. However, a two run home run from Pineda, and Baylor has the lead seven to five.
Today we welcomed Shriners patient Christian to Baylor Ballpark to be a part of our team. It's important when you have an opportunity to meet a young man or a young woman who has gone through some challenges in their life, you realize how special it is and we're able to make their day a little bit brighter, make it a little bit better. In March to April of 2021, Christian was diagnosed with leg calf perthes disease. I'd have to carry him everywhere. I was telling a friend of mine who's a Shriner of the trouble we were having. Two weeks later, we were there. The Shriners really jumped in and gave us a lot of hope. He will need to have hip replacement, but we're trying to get that healed now. You meet these kids and you realize that they're just like you and they deserve a normal life and that chance to succeed. And Shriners giving them that ability, regardless of whether they can afford it or not, that's huge. And we had Christian out of the field today. It's, he's a great kid. He's got a lot of energy. He's, he's out here taking some big swings. So it's definitely, it's inspiring. We were riding the go-kart. They show me around. I hit some balls. This is my favorite team. Baylor is going to go to the bullpen again. Cam Colley, left-hander. And the Bears with the two-run lead, thanks to three runs in the last half inning. There's a look at Cam Cayley finishing up his warm pitches. A 6'1", 170-pound sophomore out of the Woodlands. Cayley, pretty similar in stuff to what you just saw with Matt Volker, who's coming in relief for him. That fastball upper 80s, curveball slider changeup. Also a two-way player on this Baylor roster. Very similar to Kobe Andrade. First Kaylee, the brother of catcher Harrison Kaylee. Yeah, not connecting with his brother tonight. You've got uh, Court Castle behind the dish. We did see that on Friday night. Those two got to connect, the brother connection. Jacob Berry leads off. Top of the seven. Pat, I want to take this time to thank all of the Shriners Children's Ambassadors that came up and visited us up in the booth with Connor and with Hayes, of course, Alec. It's just a tremendous group of young men and women. Oh man, there are a lot of stars this weekend. It's Hard to pick out who was who was the best speaker of the patient ambassadors, but uh, boy, do we have some good ones. Yeah, Ketchy, Sydney, Mia, of course, Alec. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon was terrific. Alyssa. Alyssa was awesome. Seth, I mean, <laughs> Alyssa just got, to, got to spend some time with, with Texas. Yeah, great, uh, great ambassadors and. You know, they all shared the same consistent message, obviously the nuances of their of what they've been through, but well, Kaylee had a two strike count and then plunks Barry yet again Second hit batter. Where have we seen a hit batter before? <laughs> My goodness. About the third of the night for LSU. And it's kind of getting borderline ridiculous with these breaking balls that uh, just errant. Okay, Doty, second baseman. Yeah, another freebie for the Tigers, and they have taken advantage of a number of those tonight. Volker did well out of the bullpen for Baylor. Rigney had a couple of good innings in the second and third, but Shakey's in the first and fourth. Hit on the left side. One, two, no. Barry retired at second. Doty, a fielder's choice. Yeah, what a play. Great uh, pick and throw by Pineda at short. And a really good quick transfer from Trey Richardson at second base, but could not get the speedy K Doty going down the line. Tell you what, impressed with, uh, and we knew going into this tournament what we were going to see up the middle defensively from Baylor but really impressed with the middle infield and of course McKenzie out in center even though he's not hitting like we expected him to he's he can go get him yeah the Bears are strong up the middle and I often said Jack Pineda is a very underrated shortstop you know he's not the, the flash in the pan that you're going to see 
you know, covering a ton of space, but man, he makes every routine play and makes him look easy. And then that, that turn at second base, that's a major league turn by Trey Richardson. One of the quickest transfers you'll see up the middle in college baseball. Joe Bear comes up empty on the off speed from Kaylee. Some of the Tiger faithful trying to get their fans in the game. <laughs> it's a little bit quiet here. Well, Jay Johnson, when he took over Arizona in his first year, he led them to the College World Series. This is his first year now at LSU. Maybe. That's good. Maybe. Yeah, he certainly has the lineup. There is no doubt. The uh, offense is there. The, the power is there. Very athletic lineup. Now if the pitching can come through, I think that's... That's the key for this Tiger team this year. No matter how you cut it, no matter how you try to go around it, it always comes back to pitching. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, you talk about the quality of arms. There's certainly a ton of quality arms on that roster. It's just a matter now of, of putting the pieces together and distinguishing roles and there's a strikeout from Kaylee. Jobert going after the pitch down and away. That was a that was a good pitch. Outer half of the plate. Got him to go fishing. Yeah, breaking ball down and away. And Jobert not able to make contact. Thompson 0 for 2. His big fly on Friday night against Oklahoma gave LSU the win. That was a game which LSU had to come back several times. Oklahoma had that game several times. Two run lead, one run lead, extra innings, couldn't finish it off. Yeah, three run lead at one time. It was, uh, it was a crazy comeback. I mean, one of the better ones you'll see, especially when you had Kay Doty tie the game up twice. I mean, that set the table for Thompson's walk off, but yeah, some really big time clutch hitting from that LSU lineup. And can Thompson be the hero again tonight? Thompson hit his first home run of the season. That was his first. Now it's two and one. Lead by Doty at first. This one's into left, but it's going to be caught by Andretti. And uh, Baylor holds on to their two run lead. Fans going to have their stretch here at Minute Maid. Hope you do as well at home. Oh, here it goes. Okay. Royal Caribbean.
Go beyond the court with Rockets All Access, your backstage pass to the team all season long with exclusive player interviews, detailed team analysis, and more. Rockets All Access. New episodes every Wednesday on AT&T Sportsnet. Let's take a look back at yesterday's action at the Shriners Children's College Classic. Our Saturday recap presented by Perfect Game. And Oklahoma and UCLA got us started off with a run rule. UCLA 15-3, avenging the Friday afternoon loss in which they only scored a run. Then the middle game with Tennessee falling behind to Baylor. And then Tennessee exploding, winning 10-5. And then, of course, the big nightcap with Texas and LSU and 24-7 in attendance, 24,700 plus. And it was Texas winning their 11th of the season. Jared McKenzie leads off bottom of the seventh for Baylor. Now, Texas lost the game before this one to UCLA, and that was their first loss of the season. Ranked number one. I think if the Texas faithful will say, you know what? We win 11 out of 12 every time. We'll take it. That's a pretty good season. Yeah. <laughs> You'll take that as a Texas fan, no doubt. And a couple of big wins this weekend. Unfortunately, couldn't pull off the sweep. The Bruin team was awfully tough last couple was, of games after that 2-1 to one loss to Baylor. I said it earlier tonight, but really impressed with how John Savage's ball club, they they are, were, were playing well going into this tournament. They just couldn't get anything going against a great left-hander in Tyler Thomas on Friday, but then exploding for the 15 runs against a good Oklahoma pitching staff. And then, of course, against Texas, you know, what can you say about that? Yeah, there were some angry swings on Saturday from those those Bruins. They got it going. Kenny Oyama, I, I really like that kid. That one goes all the way to the backstop. How do you throw a strike to him? <laughs> I heard Brett Dolan say Jose Altuve would tower over Kenny Oyama. Yeah, 5-4, and uh, that's exactly right. It's a small strike zone, and the, the other part of it is he's a really good baseball player. The, the guy can swing yeah. the bat. And you just look at the speed. And he can motor. So yeah, it's a prototypical leadoff guy. If you ever could find one with that size, for sure. McKenzie with a 2-2 count. Thompson, one away. What do you say if if you're advising Jared McKenzie, who highly touted and he's just really struggled all season yeah it's it's keep working your game plan if his game plan and his, his approach is right then keep working the plan eventually it's gonna bust open for you but yeah it's been a very frustrating start for him and you know I think on a couple of occasions you could see him swinging the pitches out of the zone which is very uncharacteristic he's got tremendous plate discipline so if anything it's uh almost at times to bust yourself out of a slump you've got to just pick out a zone a particular area of the plate you're, you're just going to swing at and everything else you're going to take and you may have to tip your cap to a pitcher at times but you're just going to tighten up that that attack zone Kyle Nevin against Eric Reselman the left the right hander again it's Thompson but Thompson can't come up with this one cleanly and Nevin's going to reach on an E6 yeah, it doesn't happen very often with Jordan Thompson short that ball was hit pretty hard. I think it just kind of crawled up his glove. Yeah, it just didn't stay with it. That ball just skipped off the tip of his glove. He was expecting it to come up and stay down. Here's Valdez. The eye black on Thompson. <laughs> you see that? Eye black. Paint job, yeah. Yeah. Alice Cooper. I'm not so sure you need it for a night game, but uh, <laughs> certainly for decoration. You know, the roof was open on Friday, and it's been closed these last two days. Remember when you've been in this ballpark during the College Classic? And it's cold. Oh man! And yeah, <laughs> that air rises. 
Yeah, it's been pretty pleasant. I know we had a little bit of a sprinkle yesterday morning and they decided to close the roof. And I think because the temperatures kind of shot up into the 80s, I think is uh, got a little humid here today. And yeah, it was it was sprinkling when I got to the ballpark this afternoon. You never quite know what you're going to get with Houston weather at times. <laughs> Other than the well, humidity. <laughs> that's why they built the Astrodome back in the 60s. There's a swing and a miss, Valdez. Because Major League Baseball, you know, New York was going to get a franchise once the Dodgers and the the uh, Giants went out west. But they were going to get a franchise. So somebody else had to get a franchise to make it even in the National League. And they picked Houston with the condition of obviously building an an indoor ballpark, yeah. which had never been done before. That's right. They tried natural grass at first. That didn't work. And the uh, NASA guys went to work on AstroTurf. Lifted foul territory. Second out of the inning. Yes. Valdez popping up. Wesner has made a couple of good defensive plays at first base on the tags. A couple of errant throws by their shortstop Pineda, but he has come down and made some tags on LSU runners. Off the glove of Doty and uh, gonna be safe. Now the ball gets away from Morgan. And that will have the runner, Nevin, go to third. That ball came off of Doty's shoulder, I believe. It was smoked to second base from the bat of Westner. I think it's going to go down as an E4. Well, E4 and then and the errant throw. Yeah, two, and then two, two errant E4s. Throws play, yeah. Unfortunately for Doty, just trying to make a play there, but yeah, I think once that ball gets away from him the way it did, it was probably better for him to try to eat that ball and not make the throw. And now Jay Johnson out to have a word with his team, but and there's the ball gets away from Morgan, and you know, Westner kicks it, not intentionally, so that's why umpire at first base James Ainsworth put this safe sign out, and the play was still live. That there's nothing intentional there, even though it hit the runner after he crossed the bag and the ball bounds off his foot. That's a legal play. So Baylor with runners at first and third here, a couple of outs in the inning. And Jay Johnson just trying to calm his defense down a bit too. You get a couple of errors. Now third error in the same inning. Now third error, four errors in the ball game. And Steve Rodriguez will take this opportunity to call his base runners and hitter up have a discussion, maybe try to put on a first and third play of some sort. And that's also the defensive talk from Jay Johnson. How is LSU going to defend that if Baylor tries to put a play on here? I saw Devin Fontenot, right-hander, local product from the Woodlands, warming up. Third base coach Mike Taylor heading back to his position. Mike Taylor, uh, also a, a Houston product. Spent some time at Rice. Gosh, Mike Taylor and I played summer ball together back in, it was it 1985, maybe 84. Baseball has a, a way of doing that, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a big fraternity, we're, man. Yeah, we're just, everybody, <laughs> has played with somebody or knows somebody you can't escape it and it starts in little league and uh, i still got buddies i played with i'm sure you do as well gerald that you know just little league friends you stayed in touch with all these years oh yeah played a little high school ball I've still got high school buddies we stay in touch it's it is it's amazing and this game brings families together. Well, it's like my dad always taught me. Baseball brings everybody together somehow, <laughs> some way. The 1-0 on the way to Andretti. Cut on and missed. Well, for example, and I, I shared this story on Friday about Kyle Nevin. You know, his father played 
with the Astros. He was drafted number one in 92 before going to San Diego. But going all the way down to the fifth round that year, Steve Rodriguez was in that draft that Phil That's Nevin right. was. Yeah. Steve Rodriguez, now the head coach of Kyle Nevin. He was drafted by the Red Sox, 92. There's the 1-1 on the way. Well, Kobe Andrade, a chance to give Baylor a little bit more insurance here. It's obviously late in the game, only six outs to go. If you're an LSU Tiger. Yeah, you don't want to let them run away with this ball game. Keep it manageable. Resselman. Pitch just missing outside. And now 3-1 count. See if Baylor chooses to put Wessner in motion at first base. The 3-1 to Andrade. That's a full count. And that's just an overpowering fastball, and both times Razelman's thrown it in the zone. Andrade has swung through it. McManus getting the signs from the third base dugout. I don't think much of a question of what he's getting here. It's going to be dead red. <laughs> he's just got to gear up and get that bat head going quick. And the bases are loaded. Andrade with the walk. Walks and errors. Hurts you every time. Yeah. <laughs> well, so far this inning, it hasn't right. resulted in a run, but you know, it certainly has put a lot of pressure on Razelman in the defense of the Tigers. And this pitch count up to 25 now. 15 strikes, 10 balls. There's Nevin at third base. Wesner at second, Andrade at first. With two outs, brings up Cardoza Okendo. Esteban, he is two for three. Right now, Resilman cannot find the strike zone. Yeah, he's missing to that arm side and kind of getting a little bit of drag on the, on the back side of that motion and not quite getting to the top and through his arm slot. Sometimes a result of overthrowing, but. One oh. One out, Nevin reaching on the error by Thompson. Wesner, a couple of errors. Then a walk to Andrade. Loaded the bases with two outs and the 1-1 one -one to Cardoza Okendo. He's down the count, one and two. Resselman one pitch away from getting out of the jam and not allowing a run to score. If you're Baylor, you really want to take advantage of this opportunity that LSU has given. Oh, no doubt with that offense, man, it's uh, that two-run lead is is not a big lead <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, two-run lead with six outs to work with. It's a long way to go. Yeah, sure is. But if Cardoza Okendo can do something here, might be a different story. Resselman. He went around. Couldn't check his swing. And the Bears leave the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh. Resselman and the Tigers fired up. If we weren't proud of the craftsmanship and level of detail that go into every pair of Warby Parker glasses, well, we probably wouldn't show you how they're made, including this part which is our favorite. Wow. And this is also great. When you order a new frame, we custom cut and polish a pair of lenses just for you. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. 
it's confirmed he's packing up and heading to Los Angeles next season. Wow. Miami is losing their star player. Oh. Ouch. This is going to rock the Western Conference. We can't stop him from being traded, but we can help you trade in his jersey. With Amex Jersey Assurance, card members can get a free replacement jersey from the NBA store when their favorite player switches teams. One of the many things you can expect when you're with Amex. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Coverage of the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by Visit Las Vegas. What happens here only happens here. Coming back to Minute Maid Park. Baylor trying to take two out of three this weekend. The Shriners Children's College Classic leading LSU by two. And it's a new man on the mound for Baylor. Hamilton Oliver. Yeah, over making his sixth appearance of the season. Good stat line. Coming up uh, one earned run in three innings. A couple of punch outs, three walks. To Oliver. Upper 80s with the fastball, slider changeup. Yeah. It's a real serviceable mid reliever last year for Baylor. Baylor's had a great tradition in recent years of of closers like Troy Montemayor, Kyle Hill, Luke Boyd. Boyd graduated last year on pro ball and John Strauss and Coach Steve Rodriguez do not have that luxury this year. They're still trying to figure out that closing role, but for now, Oliver gets the call. Here's a setup man in the eighth. We've got a pinch hitter too. Josh Stevenson for LSU. Pinch hitting for Collier Crawford. The third player to be used in that number seven spot. And Jay Johnson started off with Merrifield and Josh Pearson. Right now, Oliver has fallen behind. You want to come in and throw strikes. That is the goal. It's always uh, easier said than done. Hamilton Oliver. Now it's 3 0. And a four pitch walk. The pinch hitter, Stevenson. Yeah, not the way the Bears drew it up, but now they get the tie and run to the plate. It's amazing how many free bases that LSU has had tonight. Six walks. Yeah, and Bayer, Baylor's kept them at, at five runs. It could easily be a 10 run game with this LSU offense. Well, we got a long way to go, though, Pat. Yeah, six walks, what, three hit batters? Nine freebies. In for a strike to Gavin Dugas. And LSU has left seven runners aboard. Baylor has matched that total. Dugas, two run single, run scored in the fourth inning. Also hit by a pitch. Oliver. That's the front door breaker. Just catches the inside corner. Oliver comes from Corpus. One, two.
Yeah, big time way. slider from Oliver and big time strikeout. Look at the pitch before the strikeout pitch. Look at the uh, arm of Dugas. That, yep, maybe the legs. Did he try to push his knee into the ball? I don't know. It did work. Strike call by Hopeland umpire Ronnie Teague. Another pinch hitter for LSU. Pinch hitting for Tyler McManus. It's going to be Giovanni DiGiacomo. DiGiacomo? DiGiacomo. Junior from Naples, Florida. Nothing between you and the bag, Chase. Jay Johnson setting up several pinch hitters in this ballgame. <laughs> Left center field. And Andrade with the catch. Retreating back to first base. Stevenson two away. Giacomo flying out, yeah, pinch making, hitter. Making a bid for extra bases. Pretty good swing. Solid contact. And that ball's about 10 feet to his left. It might have been off the Scroff Crawford scoreboard. And it goes right to the gap and easy catch for Andrade. Sometimes we call them Minute Maid Park home runs. That goes into the Crawford boxes. As yep. G. Giacomo did not like that. Well, Steve Rodriguez, the Baylor head coach, out to the visit Hamilton Oliver. So far, he's thrown 10 pitches. He came back after that walk, got the K on Dugas, and then the fly out. I think uh, Rodriguez is going to make the change. Scheduled to bat, Trey Morgan. And got a new pitcher for Baylor coming in hey we've seen him before Mason Marriott from Tomball back with the rest of the top of the eight behold unlimited wireless for only 30 bucks that's pretty cool but you know what's cooler saving up to 400 bucks exactly and if we really want to take it up a notch get all that and nationwide 5g included Ooh, nice shot send that to me I got you. Break free from the big three and get connected to the nation's most reliable 5G network. Get the new Samsung Galaxy S22 series on Xfinity Mobile. And right now, save big with up to $750 off a new Samsung device. Switch today. No matter who you are, and actually no matter what the year of car you, you're driving, there's nothing like the Sewell customer service. Everything is seamless and everything is well calculated, well thought out. I would love to think that it's just me, but I know that they do this for every customer. I'm a soil customer for life. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at Sewell Cadillac. H-Town High School Sports. The excitement. The emotion. The passion. So tall, man. Unrivaled coverage. Only on H Town High School Sports with Todd Freed. See it right here on AT&T Sportsnet. New pitcher Mason Marriott, who pitched in a very tight situation against UCLA on Friday afternoon comes in with the game very close as LSU trying to rally here on the top of the eighth there are two outs and Marriott the freshman from Tomball has to get one out Trey Morgan first baseman well it's been a tryout for the closer position but Marriott is uh, seemingly filling that bill for Baylor as we talked about Really came in the night in, uh, in relief of Tyler Thomas against UCLA and did nail that game down. It got interesting at the end. It, bases loaded. Bases jam. loaded and a 3 0 count. And he was able to get the strike. This one's hit weakly. Richardson 
gets Morgan. One pitch. Marriott says, I've got it. Baylor still up by two. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs, that's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long, you'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Nice. Sweet. Go big or go home. What'd you say? What's up? Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan at roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Behold, unlimited wireless for only 30 bucks. That's pretty cool, but you know what's cooler? Saving up to 400 bucks. Exactly. And if we really want to take it up a notch, get all that and nationwide 5G included. Ooh, nice shot. Send that to me. I got you. Break free from the big three and get connected to the nation's most reliable 5G network. Get the new Samsung Galaxy S22 series on Xfinity Mobile. And right now, save big with up to $750 off a new Samsung device. Switch today. New pitcher for LSU is Devin Fontenot. Graduate transfer from the Woodlands. Devin Fontenot following Grant Taylor, Riley Cooper, Paul Gervais, and Eric Reselman. Fifth pitcher to be used by Jay Johnson. LSU Tigers. It's a two-run lead for Baylor. Big hit coming from uh, Jack Pineda. Two-out, two-run home run. When the game was tied, he's given Baylor the lead of 7-5, to five, and that's where we are. Home run came in the sixth. Flashing up on the big board here at Minute Maid Park with the attendance. A new all-time tournament record for the 2022 attendance for Shriner Children's College Classic, 53,879. That is outstanding. What a weekend for the Shriners and for college baseball in the city of Houston. Just incredible. Notifying the fans that they are a part of history. Well, a new pitcher for the Tigers. Fontno. One of the better bullpen, bullpen arms. What a great three pitch mix. Fastball has some good life. He'll sit low 90s. We'll use that slider and change up. Castle to lead off the bottom of the eighth. The Resselman throwing an inning and a third. Eight hits to go along with the seven runs. Fair ball. Make it nine hits. Castle. Rounding, going to second, sliding safely. Now, how about the game? Court Castle's having a triple, now a double for the Bears. And that's a hanging slider from Fontno. And Castle just turns it around right down the left field line. And ball kicks off the grandstands. And what a swing. It's not going to show up in the box score tomorrow, but. Castle's hustle down the first baseline prevented that double play from happening. That's and right. then Pineda hits the home hits the run bomb. in the sixth. Yeah. They're showing the speed. A triple RBI, fielder's choice, which kept the inning alive. And then the double. That's a pretty athletic catcher. Of course, I had a chance to see Court for two summers. And uh, just saw the maturation of him and as a player and hit the weight room, increase his, his speed. And... That's where you see all the behind-the-scenes work that baseball players do that uh, a lot of folks don't get to see. Pineda hits it on the right side, advances Castle to third. 
Yeah, it won't go down as a sacrifice, but that's exactly what Pineda was trying to do, is pull that ball to the right side and advance Castle to third base with less than two outs. Now you've got Trey Richardson and Jared McKenzie. Next two scheduled. Got two shots at it. Yep. yep. Well, infield for LSU drawn in. Well, Devin Fontenot, who played at the Woodlands, his high school coach, Ron Eastman. He's probably faced off Richardson a few times, right? Richardson, one and oh, the Kingwood count. High School product, yeah. and Fontenot from the Woodlands. I'm sure they've seen each other before. Richardson, one for three. Now it's two and oh. A couple of sliders off the plate away. So he throws Richardson with the advantage count to the hitter. LSU wants to keep it right here with a two-run game because they have two, three, and four due up in the top of the ninth. The pitch. It's a strike call. Two and one. Stays soft, gets the call. Yep, Marriott will face Murderer's Row coming up in the ninth inning. No problem, right? <laughs> That's why that run at third is huge for Baylor. The 2-1. Richardson looks like he got jammed a little bit. Yeah, front door breaking ball, and you know, Fontenot evens the count. You know, one of the things that I've been wanting to ask in your opinion on the air about the technology of how things have changed in the game, the college game, here within the last 10 years. Really, it, it's, it seems it's a little bit different now. It sure is. It's it's increased at a, at a really high rate of speed. And you, you think about even a situation like this where you've got flow charts and hitting charts, uh, heat charts. You now pitchers know where each hitter's hot zone, cold zone is. It's... It really is amazing in college baseball where it's come. This one's fouled. We saw J John Savage many times on a walkie-talkie. That's right. Using the communication system now allowable in college baseball. The catchers will use the earpiece. The pitching coaches or head coaches in this case will signal the pitch in. Would you have liked to have had that when you played? I, I think anything to speed the game up is is helpful and uh, you know we, we see Vanderbilt players now wearing the, the smart watches and you know play signal in through the watch I think it's uh, I think when you have things like that that don't mess with the traditional side of baseball it, it, it it's okay right uh, it does take away the the sign stealing and some of the the old traditions that we used to see but uh, to me I think it's just one more way to kind of speed the game up where it doesn't take away from the game yeah, pace of play is important. Yeah, exactly right. I think that's where the feedback from fans is you got to listen to what they want, too, and that's that's important. Richardson with one out. Castle at third. The 2-2. Two -two. Base hit. Baylor gets that insurance run. 8-5. Bears. Bottom of the eighth. Richardson with his second hit tonight. Yeah, just before the... Big RBI base hit from Richardson. There was a mound visit. That's Hayden Trevinsky going out to ask his pitcher, Devin Fontenot, hey, what do you like here? What do you feel good with? And he saw the two sliders he was able to throw for strikes to even the count to Richardson, and then a couple of foul balls. And Fontenot wanted to go back with the fastball, and Richardson catches up with it and adds the uh, immensely important insurance run for the Bears. Travinsky as a catcher coming in for McManus. Shaw's getting back in there. <laughs> Morgan <laughs> trying to sell it to first base umpire James Ainsworth. I love Trey Morgan's reactions at first base. He's done that just about every pickoff play. He thinks he's got him. Slaps that tag down quick. And he uh, brings a ton of energy to that position.
Now well, it's a big run for Baylor. Castle coming in from third on the RBI single with one out by Richardson. That's a quick move from Fontenot. And McKenzie. And Richardson cuts this lead down by about a half step. McKenzie bidding for a hit, and he's got it, and no one's covering third. And Trey Richardson goes to third. <laughs> How many up. times do you see that? Heads up base running on a bunt by McKenzie. Go from first to third on a bunt single. Yeah, there was a miscommunication there between Fontenot and Matt Merrifield, the third baseman for LSU, to begin with on the initial bunt play. And then uh, on that particular play, once Merrifield commits, Fontenot has to continue on to third base and just kind of gave up on it. Richardson takes advantage of it with the heads up running play. And Gerald, you talk about another way to bit, get yourself out of a slump? Just become a great bunter. <laughs> McKenzie with his first hit of the night. Now Jacob Berry now at third base. Got runners on the corners. Another chance for another run. Here's Kyle Nevin, who has had himself a good tournament. Oh, great block there by Travinsky. He keeps the run off the board with that block. The 1-0 to Nevin. Nevin lifting it into left center. It will be caught by Cruz, but tagging easily coming in from third is Trey Richardson. Baylor adding on another run, increasing their lead to four. Sacrifice fly, RBI by Nevin. His second RBI tonight. Yeah, great swing by Nevin and making a bid for extra bases and ball finally comes down. But that's a manufactured run by a great base running from Trey Richardson. I take that back a moment ago. That was uh, Jacob Berry, the third baseman for LSU. There were a couple of defensive changes between innings there. Josh Stevenson out right. And that's going to be all for Devin Fontenot. Not a good homecoming here at Minute Maid Park. New pitcher will have the rest of the bottom of the eighth coming up. I don't think I can do this. You said you wanted to feel the power of cricket 5G. I thought you meant like live streaming. Oh, we're live streaming, all right. Let's roll. Ah! Ah, no! Smile, you're on cricket. Ah! Woo! Innovation transforms the world, turning the status quo upside down. Innovation created a healthcare system that not only improves the lives of veterans, it transforms the lives of healthcare professionals with unique opportunities to work with industry thought leaders while serving our nation's heroes. The Department of Veterans Affairs, where innovation ensures those who served our nation are served by the very best. See how a career at VA can transform your future. From the jump, take aim, and take charge. Oh my God. Pick up the pace, and don't let up. Lock in, and lock them down. Oh, there he is, right on cue. And each time a challenge presents itself, rise to it, and make them remember your name. Goes down for Kevin Porter Jr. Rain down from deep, and rain supreme. Left-handed pitcher, graduate student, Trey Schaefer, the left-hander, on in relief of Devin Fontenot. Six-foot, 180-pounder from Biloxi, Mississippi, Biloxi High School. Well, Schaefer becomes the sixth pitcher of the night for LSU. The lefty sits 89-93 with a fastball. Slider changeup. 
issue for Schaefer so far this young season has been command. Six walks, four strikeouts in two and two-thirds innings. See the uh, inflated earned run average. That's what six walks will do to you. But Schaefer now coming on board to get these uh, Baylor Bears out here in the ninth inning. Make up the bottom of the eighth. Designated hitter Antonio Valdez stands in to be the first hitter that Trey Schaefer faces. Six pitchers now for Jay Johnson and the LSU Tigers. Two outs. Jared McKenzie at first base. Well, Gerald, you referenced it earlier, but how about the production at the bottom of this Baylor order? Had a couple of singles, a triple, a double. Three runs scored between the eight and, eight and nine hole for those at Kendall and Castle. Bad throw. Schaefer down the line, going to third, McKenzie, and he's going to slide in safely. McKenzie looked like he was going to be out if Schaefer could have made a good throw, but it was wild. There's no way that Morgan was going to be able to make the play on that one. And McKenzie looked like he was hung out to dry, and you're exactly right. I'm getting caught up there, but Schaefer just simply threw it away. Another error by LSU, five errors. That's uncharacteristic from the LSU Tigers. Yeah, pretty good move by Schaefer there. And see the Baylor dugout just telling McKenzie to keep running. So Valdez. Maybe a chance to add on yet another. Two huge insurance runs for Baylor in this bottom of the eighth. Well, that's been a very messy game defensively for the Tigers. And I'm sure it's going to be a topic of conversation come tomorrow when in their team meetings with Coach Jay Johnson. McKenzie at third. Schaefer against Valdez in for a strike he just catches the inside corner <laughs> McKenzie off of third Mike Taylor third base coach Went and said something to McKenzie before Schaefer was about to pitch, and he sprinted about a third of the way up the line. Came a hard sprint, fake, trying to get Schaefer to balk and not biting on it. I'm going to take you back to the uh, take you back to the third inning when Jay Johnson asked. Home plate umpire Ronnie T to check out Will Rigney's shirt. <laughs> you remember that? I do. <laughs> that was forever ago. It's lifted on the infield. Kate Doty has got it, and that'll do it for Baylor. However, they add two runs, another error, and the Bears lead 9 to 5 heading to the ninth. New Vicks Convenience Pack. <laughs> Dayquil Severe for you, and Daily Vix Super C for me. Vix Super C is a daily supplement with vitamin C and B vitamins to help energize and replenish. Dayquil Severe is the max strength daytime coughing power through your day medicine. New from Vix. Innovation transforms the world, moving us forward not just in steps, but in leaps and bounds. Innovation created a healthcare system so extraordinary, it not only improves the lives of veterans, it transforms the lives of healthcare professionals, collaborating through integrated care teams, accessing the latest technology, working with the most advanced medical science, and even creating it. Like discovering new ways to integrate technology with the human body. It's a unique culture of transformation that leads to solutions that best serve our veterans. The Department of Veterans Affairs. 
where innovation ensures those who served our nation are served by the very best. See how a career at VA can transform your future. Hey, I'm Matt Adams, host of the Fairways of Life show, and you can catch us every week right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Long-form interviews with legends of the game and today's stars. If it happens in golf, we'll take you inside of the ropes right here on the Fairways of Life show. Moving along to the ninth inning. And the Baylor Bears up by four. Gerald Sanchez along with Pat Combs. And... We're in the last game of this magnificent tournament. Shriners Children's College Classic. Mason Marriott needing three more outs. And he'll face Dylan Cruz, Jacob Berry, and Kate Doty. No problem, right? It's right. a walk in the office. <laughs> it's just the heart of the lineup against one of the really outstanding offenses in all of college baseball. Dylan Cruz inside for a ball. Marriott threw one pitch to get out of the eighth inning. He got Morgan to ground out to Richardson, the second baseman. Well, the issue for the Baylor pitching staff has not been giving up hits to this lineup. Only four on the night. But they have given up nine free bases. It's kind of amazing that they've only given up five runs, but Marriott does not want to put Anybody on base with this uh, middle of this lineup coming up? Well, he's fallen behind 3-0. and oh. Simple. Throw strikes. Which sometimes Marriott has some trouble doing. Saw him fussle a little bit on Friday against UCLA. 3-0. In for a strike. Uh, splits the plate with that. But you're exactly right. Three and two-thirds innings. Five walks, four strikeouts, so the command has been the issue at times. In for a strike, full count. And catches the inside corner. I don't think that was in Cruz's zone. Selective hitter. Now he's got to be ready. Full count. And we'll do it again. Matt Cruz, a very patient hitter. Great plate discipline. He knows LSU needs base runners. He'll take it any way he can get it. LSU started the game, getting two runs in the top of the first. Baylor getting a run in the bottom of the inning. Again, fouled into the Bears' dugout. Adam Scattering. <laughs> Some yellow jerseys diving down there in that dugout. Baylor grabbed a 3-2 lead before LSU scored three in the fourth. Baylor kept chipping away. Then the two-run home run by Pineda with two outs in the sixth. Giving the Bears a 7-5 lead, then they added two in the last half inning. Tom Cruise goes to his own dugout. So he's he's got yeah. both dugouts. <laughs> Here's a souvenir for you, boys. Yeah. Marriott. And this one's high on the infield. Wesner, Richardson, Richardson. That was a big league pop-up. I think Richardson could have made a sandwich waiting for that one to come down. <laughs> That's a huge out, number one. That's what you want if you're a pitcher. You get that big first out in the inning. A couple of things I want to mention, Pat. 53,879, an all-time record for Shriners Children's College Classic attendance here at Minute Maid. That is outstanding. We reached our goal over 100%. Donations doesn't mean that you can't still donate. And then first to Barry fouling this one out of play. 
Michigan, Rice, AM, TCU, Tech, and Louisville are the six teams that we will see here next year at Minute yeah. Maid Park. Another outstanding field, and that's just what you get with Dustin Johnson and the Shriners. They, they have uh, strategically invited you know, various colleges from around the country to come in, but they always get great teams, great competition. It's going to set up for a really cool weekend of baseball next March. Barry's got a count of one and one. I'm excited to see Jose Cruz Jr. and his Rice Owls. Let's see what type of recruiting class he'll have. I think you give him a couple of seasons to get his guys into the program, and it's going to be something different. Barry sending this one into right, and this is going to reach the seats. Barry with his fifth home run this season. And now how big do those two runs look in the last half inning yeah, for no Baylor? About it. Solo shot by Barry. Well, that was a swing. Well, this is uh, something you put on tape and just show your little leaders. What a beautiful swing by Jacob Barry. And well, he's not highly touted for nothing, Pat. No, and that's uh, what gets these Major League Scouts really excited as well. There's still a few guys hanging around because they just enjoy watching Barry put on a show, and that's a no-doubter. All right, 15, 17 rows up. Okay, Doty, second baseman. And what, what do you want you to see from Marriott is how he responds to that. Comes right back and throws strike one. The ball just down. Yeah, nice. you can't. And as a freshman, Marriott can't let that get to you. Nope, you got to flush it quick. Still a game to be had here. It's now a three run lead. You know, pitchers, especially guys out of the bullpen, have to have extremely short memories. Oh, man. And it won't last long in this game if you don't. Now it uh, doesn't get any easier from here. You got Doty and Joe Bear to mess with. Marriott. Esteban Cardoza Okendo not in time. Couldn't come up with it cleanly. That ball just kind of ate him up. His second hop got him. And with uh, Doty's speed, you got to be clean. Still one out. And Joe Bear, Braden Joe Bear. Let's take another look at that. And the ball just popped up on that second hop, got him. And he comes up with it cleanly. It's going to be close anyway. Yeah, it's but hard to come up on that ball. They ruled out an E5. That's the first error by Baylor tonight. And the LSU faithful that are here are starting to become vocal. Well, now you look down on the scorecard here, look down on the on-deck circle, you've got Jobert, if he can find his way on, sets up for a Jordan Thompson heroic swing. Maybe might we see it again? That's Mason Marriott's game right now. I don't see anybody in the bullpen for Baylor in right field. Joe Bear, the 0 1. Breaking ball just misses down. That's the pitch that Baylor has been able to entice Joe Bear to swing at a couple of occasions. Got the strikeout on him in the seventh. Got a breaking ball down. Here's the 1 1. Into center field. It falls in front of McKenzie. Now, all of a sudden, the tying run comes to the plate. Jordan Thompson. We just had that feeling that uh, these Tigers weren't going to go quietly. How about this one on uh, Friday night? Thompson with his first home run of the season, a walk-off in the 11th against Oklahoma. There it was. That was the Friday night winner. 
Sending Mike the Tiger and others ha home happy. And Baton Rouge. So here's Thompson. Marriott, the right-hander. Foul. What, what happened with that fastball? And it looked like Thompson was on it, too. Yeah. Just a little bit in on his hands. Well, that's just pitching fearless right there. That's, that's what you want to see with your closer, but man, you sure want that ball down in the zone <laughs> against Jordan Thompson. <laughs> Hey, not a bad game to end this great tournament. Oh, man. Right down to the very end. An approaching midnight. <laughs> 0 1. Off the plate. Man, what an entertaining game between these Baylor Bears and LSU Fighting Tigers. It's. Been quite a finale. And Tiger fans who have been relatively quiet most of this game, they are vocal now. The one out, one one. Oh, <laughs> he was on it again. Yeah, another fastball over the plate. Now Marriott is ahead in the count. See if he tries to expand that a little bit. Man, the strike zone. Thompson with the two strike approach. Yeah, I think you see Marriott go back to the breaking ball, and that's the pitch he's been able to keep down in the zone. You know, Thompson would love to atone for that error that eventually led to a couple of runs. Well, let's see what the Bears and Marriott go with here. Doty at second, Joe Barrett first. Doty being chased back by Marriott. And at this point, I think I want 100% of my pitchers' focus on home plate. And he went down and away, tried to get Thompson to go after it. Thompson, no way. Yeah, wasn't close. You know, Marriott's got plus stuff. Stevenson on deck, the right fielder. Oh. Now we're going to play this one out. Full count. <laughs> Well, that's the pitch to get Thompson out with. It just hasn't been quite good enough near the zone, and Thompson has laid off. The problem you've got here with John Strauss is what do you call? You, you've got to throw a strike. Don't want to put the tiger at first base. Got him. Got him looking. Wow, what a pitch. What a pitch by the freshman. This locks up Thompson in a perfectly placed fastball down and away. Right there on the corner. Ronnie Teague, home plate umpire, ringing him up. A little help from his catcher, Court Castle, pumped up. That's what a catcher's there for, right? He says, that a boy, way to make your pitch. So here's Stevenson. Runner still at first and second. Marriott. Oh, He's trying away. to go on the outer half of the plate there. Only hitting 500 right now, Stevens. <laughs> Stevenson coming on as a pinch hitter, walking in the eighth. And Trey Richardson, the second baseman for Baylor, a couple of steps in the outfield. Now 
LSU down to an out. They're ahead in the count here with Stevenson 2-0. Oh. Change up down in the zone and carry out behind in the count again. Barry hitting his fifth home run with one out to right field in this ninth inning. Error by Cardoza Okendo and a single by Joe Bear. The 2 0. And as the clock strikes midnight, central time, it's 3 0 to Stevenson. With Gavin Dugas on deck. But right now, Stevenson. Down the middle. This is reminiscent of the game on Friday afternoon <laughs> when Marriott you. came on. Last hitter of the game. Yeah. Bases loaded, 3-0, and then he ended up getting the out. A UCLA game. And yeah. yeah. Didn't bite him then, fall behind hitters, but uh, he sure will make a living doing that. Three one. Two in a row. Let's play out the drama, well, why shall not? we? Yep. Marriott's been here before. Isn't this the greatest game? <laughs> you is, can't man. run out the clock. Earl yeah. Weaver once said, you've got to be a man. You've got to throw the ball over the plate and give that's the other right. team all 27 outs. And that's where we are here. Full count, three balls, two strikes, two outs, two men on the tying run for LSU in the person of Josh Stevenson and Marriott delivers. In for strike three. Wow. And this ball game is over. How about Mason Marriott? Closing this game out in some dramatic fashion, but the Bears going two and one on this weekend, stealing one here from the LSU Fighting Tigers. The Tigers had the dramatic win on Friday, but come back to lose their next two. And congratulations to Steve Rodriguez and Baylor going two and one. And all the games were interesting, exciting, and the fans were treated to some tremendous college baseball here in the 2022 Shriners Children's College Classic at Minute Maid Park. What a weekend, Gerald. This has been fun. There you see Connor. And they're, they're having fun. Well, it took them till midnight, but they got the job done. The Bears with the big 9-6 to six victory tonight over LSU. Alec. You know, he's, uh, he's going to be a sports broadcaster one day. <laughs> as Baylor ends up winning this one. Well, the fans have been treated, and we hope that you have enjoyed it as much as we have brought it to you here on AT&T Sportsnet. For Pat Combs, I'm Gerald Sanchez from Minute Maid Park. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next year. Best thing.